Do you want to learn how to create your own webshop and start selling products on the internet? If that's the case, you're at the right place. My name is Ferdi and in this video I will show you step by step how to create your own webshop with WordPress and WooCommerce. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. If you start from scratch, I will show you how to get your own domain name and web hosting, how to install WordPress and how to install WooCommerce. An amazing free plugin that will turn your website into a webshop and enables you to sell products on the internet. Then we will create six different kinds of products. We start with a simple product, a product with no options, in this case a black hoodie. It can also be a cap in one color or sunglasses and the only thing that people can do is add it to the cart. Next we will create a variable product. A product can have multiple sizes, multiple colors, so I can select them over here. I want to change to a black color. The image also changes. What I see this is 1995, but for every specific variation, I can change the stock and I can change the price. So if I would say Excel, you see that the price changes. Next, we will create a virtual product. It can be a coaching call or a digital service you offer. The fourth product we will create is a digital downloadable product, like an ebook or an image or any digital file that you want to sell. We will create an affiliate product and with affiliate marketing, you can promote other people's products and when people buy those products to your unique affiliate link, you get a commission. And last, we will create a grouped product. It gives visitors the opportunity to select multiple products on one page. It can be an iPhone with different sizes or a whole set of clothes that will fit nicely together. And for each product we will create, we'll talk about configuration options like the price, discount, schedule discount for a certain time, inventory, categories and subcategories. We're going to talk about tags, images, the short and the long description of your product. And after we have created six different kinds of products, we will configure our web shop. Change the amount of products to show, change the look and feel of the products, decide what and what not to display. We can even change all the colors in our website with a few clicks or change our complete website into a dark website. With everything you learn in this tutorial, you can have an end result like this or like this one. or this one. We can also use a sidebar with widgets that will help visitors to browse through your products. For instance, visitors can search for products, they can filter your products by price, browse through your categories and subcategories, you can highlight certain products and when visitors add something to the cart, they will see a widget with their current cart status. Visitors can browse through your products, add products to the cart, then they can view the cart. And here they see an overview of everything they have in their cart. We will show a message that when they spend $80 more, they get free shipping and this can really boost your sales. Right now they pay $14.95, but when they increase the products, spend $80 extra, they get free shipping. I'll show you how to add coupon codes. We can apply it over here. And now we get 20% discounts. And coupon codes are also a great way to boost your sales for new visitors and returning visitors. You can create coupon codes with free shipping, discounts in dollars or in your particular currency, in percentage, and also set limitations like spending at least $35 for a coupon code to work, or create a coupon code for a specific product, or make sure that the coupon code can only be used one time. We will dive deep into that subject. We'll also automate the whole shipping process based on the total weight of the order or based on the price based on where people live and everything will be automated. For instance, right now I pay $40.95 shipping costs, but when I spend at least $200, I will get free shipping. We'll talk about taxes and not the state taxes, but about calculating taxes for your buyers. And I'll show you how you can set it up manually for each country for a certain state, normal taxes rates, reduced rates, and I will show you how to automate the whole process. So WooCommerce will take care of it for you. And then we will talk about payment methods so that people on your website can pay using credit card, PayPal, Klarna, Afterpay, you name it. So when people go from your cart to the checkout page, they can fill in their details, pay with their preferred payment method. And when everything is automated, visitors can buy products on your website and the money goes to your bank account. And it's your job to send the right products to the right address. A WooCommerce will take care of everything else. We'll talk about handling incoming orders and how to adjust the order confirmation emails your buyers will get. When you apply everything I teach you in this tutorial, you are able to sell products on the internet. And the great thing is you only have to focus on sending the right products to the right address. Everything else will be taken care of automatically by WooCommerce. And that is what I will show you in this tutorial. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings of the YouTube video and change the playback speed to a slower one. 
or you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and go back five seconds in the video. In the description of the video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, you can click on one of the timestamps and you go directly to that part of the video. If you like what you're seeing so far or like what you're going to see and going to learn, please like this video. That would help me out a lot and it would mean a lot to me. And if you want to learn more about WooCommerce, uh, e-commerce, WordPress, affiliate marketing, then feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I make tutorials about all those subjects. And if you have any question, feel free to leave a comment. And then I wish you the best of luck. And I want to show you right now for who this tutorial is. This tutorial is for anyone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on their web shop. For anyone who doesn't have a lot of time and wants to do it within a few hours. It is for anyone who has never made a website or a web shop. It's for complete beginners. It's for anyone who wants to adjust and edit their websites themselves instead of waiting for an expensive web developer to do it for them. It is for anyone who wants to learn how to sell products on the internet. And it's for anyone who wants to add a web shop to their current WordPress website. If you do not fit in one of the categories for whom this tutorial is, sorry, this tutorial is not for you. Please shut it down and go home. <laughs> Just kidding. This tutorial is for everybody that wants to create a web shop. So having said that, let me show you the four steps we will take in order to create a beautiful web shop. So there are four things we need to do. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how you can get your own domain name on web hosting. And I can give you 70% discount. After that, we will install WordPress. Then we will install WooCommerce. And when we have done that, we will create our amazing web shop. If you already have a domain name on web hosting, and you have already installed WordPress, then I will show you on the screen where you need to go in order to install WooCommerce and follow along in this tutorial. And now it's really time to get started. The first things we need are a domain name and web hosting. Let me tell you what a domain name is and what web hosting is. A domain name is the address of your website. So if I would go to facebook.com, facebook.com is the domain and everything you see on this website is the web hosting. Web hosting is a really fast computer that is turned on 24 seven with all the information on your website. And you can rent it for a few dollars per month. It's like having a house. If you want people to visit you, you need to give them your address and your domain name is the address of your website. So your domain name is the address of your website and everything you see over here is the web hosting. If Facebook would have no domain name, it would look something like this. And that can be quite a challenge to remember by heart. And that's why we need a domain name. And when we have a domain name, we want to display things on our website. And that's why we need web hosting. If you have that already, that's great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, go to webhosting1414.com. Hit enter. And then you can click on the link, go to SiteGround. I love SiteGround. SiteGround is in my opinion, the best web hosting provider there is. And I'm not the only one with that opinion. In a Facebook web hosting group with more than 5,000 members, SiteGround is mentioned most when it comes to the best web hosting provider. And I agree with them. I scroll down a bit and there are three plans you can choose. And the best value for your money is the grow big plan. And what is the difference between the grow big plan and the startup plan? Here with the Grow Big Plan, you can have unlimited websites. Look at this, unlimited websites. And with the startup plan, you only have one website. And all the time, people are upgrading from startup to Grow Big because they want to create more websites. So I suggest Grow Big. And you can always upgrade later if you want to. Over here, you can have unlimited websites, 20 gigabytes of web space. Well, most websites are 200 megabytes. So you can have up to 100 websites with this plan. You can have up to 100,000 visits per month. And I hope you'll get that because that will mean a lot of business for you. And then if you have that, you can always upgrade to the Go Geek plan. And then you will have 40 gigabytes of web space and you can have up to 400,000 visits per month. This is the plan I have right now because I have a lot of websites and a lot of visitors. But keep in mind, you can always upgrade later. So I will start with the Grow Big plan and more great things about it is you can have free SSL. So your website will be secured with some web hosting providers that cost money. Here it is free. You have daily backups. That's amazing. If you somehow mess things up, SiteGround got you covered. You will have a backup of the day before and of the day before that. Free CDN, that means that your website will be fast throughout the whole world. No matter where the visitors come from, your website will be blazing fast. You can have unlimited free email accounts. And really important, this is great for e-commerce. We're going to create a web shop in this tutorial, so that's great. And if you somehow really don't like it, you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk for you. So I will choose the grow big plan by clicking here. Now we need to choose a domain name. If I would say facebook.com, I want to buy facebook.com. I click on proceed. Of course, it will say you've chosen an invalid domain name because it's already taken. So you need to choose a domain name that is still available. What I would advise everybody in the world to do is get your own domain name with your first name and your last name. 
I hope it's still available for you. And otherwise you can use a company name or a custom name. And if you offer local services, you can place your hometown in the domain. For instance, web design Maslaus. The great thing is that you can choose a lot of different extensions, .com, .net, .org. I always suggest use .com or the local one from your country. So I will choose the garter rope and then 24 because my garter rope shop will be open 24 seven because it's a web shop. So let's see if it's still available. I click on proceed. Yes, it says congratulations domain garter Roby 24 is available for registration with your hosting account. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Now I can leave some details over here. First, my email address jk24co at gmail.com. I need to create a password and I need to confirm my password. And then over here, I need to say from which country I am. I'm from the Netherlands. And I will fill in my details. 30, Horpersoek, 30, and Anna Media. If you have a company, fill in your name over here in your VAT slash tax ID. If you fill in your tax ID, you don't have to pay taxes for this order. It's okay. Great. Uh, SiteGround gives feedback at once, which is nice. I'm from this city, this street. And my zip code, if I would say it wrong, it will correct me. It will say, hey, you need to remove the space. And then over here, I need to fill in my phone number. And it's really important that it's the correct number. So say plus three, one, six, and then your phone number. And really important to have this over here, the, the country code. I scroll down and depending on where you come from, there can be a local payment providers. So if I would enter this website from the Netherlands, I would see idle over here. You will maybe see PayPal. I will use credit card, So I will fill in my details. And then we go to the purchase information. We go for the grow big plan and the data center. We can choose a few depending on where you want to focus on. If you want to focus on people from the United States, keep it in the United States. If you want to focus on people from the Netherlands or somewhere near the Netherlands, choose Germany or the Netherlands. I want to go for, for people worldwide. So I choose the USA and the period is 12 months. We pay $6.69 per month and then we can have unlimited websites on our grow big account, which is amazing. And then if we scroll down, I highly urge you to get domain privacy. It will cost you $12 per year, but it will save you so much spam because if you don't turn this on, a lot of companies can see that there's a new domain name with your personal information, with your phone number, your address, your email account, your email address. And then they can send you spam emails like, hey, I can make a logo for you. I can do SEO for you. You don't want that. So for $12, you don't have that. Then I scroll down and I will pay a total amount of $110.27. It can be a little bit more or less with you, depending on where you come from. And with this amount, you have a domain name or web hosting for a complete year. And you can add more domains to your account and create multiple websites. And they're all blazing fast. And there's a great support if you get stuck somewhere. I confirm that I've read the terms and service and I agree with them. And I would like to receive news updates from SiteGround. If you got this through webhosting12.com, you don't pay more, but you get an amazing discount and I do get credit for it. So it's a win-win situation. And then I click on pay now. And then the great thing is that our website will be live immediately. We don't have to wait for 24 hours. It will be live at once. If everything goes right, you should see this right now. And that's amazing. And then I want to congratulate you with your domain name and web hosting. If you don't see that, it can be that you see something like this. If that's the case, fill in the confirmation number you get in the text message, and then you should be able to proceed. And in some cases, uh, SiteGround will put an amount on your uh, credit card account and you need to fill in that number so they know for sure it is your credit card account. And you can do that by going to your account, or your credit card account, or by calling your credit card company. I had to call them. I want to check everything so you know exactly what to do in every situation. I hope both of those confirmations do not appear for you, but now you know what to do when you see those two screens. So let's continue. And my account was successfully created. How great is that? I can proceed to the customer area and I log in with jk24co at gmail.com. I click on next. My password, which I just created, I click on login. Really nice. This is awesome. So we can set up our site, but what I prefer to do uh, we will verify it later. I will go to websites and over here at garderobi.com. 
it says pending, but if I click on complete, we go to the next screen. We use an existing domain. We already selected it and I click on continue. If you don't see it, you can select it over here. I click on continue. And I want to skip and create an empty site. So I click on that button and then I finish it. I don't need to have the SiteGround scanner. It will take uh, a few minutes to set this up. Uh, most of the time it's shorter, a few seconds. And there we are. We can view our site. So if I go to my website, it is live. We are live right now, which is amazing. We can also go to the site tools and that's what I prefer. So I go to the site tools because we want to make our website secure. In order to do that, we need to go to security here at the left. Personally, I really like this layout and structure. It's really intuitive. Security SSL manager. We're going to make our website secure like this. Then I select the domain name. I select SSL. It's called Let's Encrypt. And then I click on Get. This can take a minute, so be patient or not. And then have a hard time right now. Okay, there it is. Now I need to go to Manage SSL. And then here at the right at Actions, I click on the three dots. And I click on Enforce HTTPS. And then I turn it on. Yes, now we are ready to install WordPress. We go to WordPress, install and manage or install and manage. And I know we're going to work with WooCommerce, but I rather select WordPress. I like to start from scratch with a WordPress website. I want to install everything myself. So I select the domain, the language, and I can also decide to go for a subfolder. For instance, garderobe24.com forward slash new or test. But I want to start in the main folder, garderobe24.com. I want to create a username. I want to create a password. I want to fill in my email address, jk24co at gmail.com. I scroll down. I don't need to have uh, the WordPress starter. I click on install. And now WordPress is being installed on our brand new secured domain. Congratulations, WordPress is installed and now we can view the site and this is the front end. This is what people will see when they enter your website. Your website is secure and then this is the back end of our website. Here we can configure a lot of things. So we have a live website. Everybody that goes to this domain at this moment will see this over here. So I will close this now. We have the back end. And the front end. This is what people will see when they enter your website. And this is what you will see when you log in to your WordPress website. And over here, we can give our website a title. We can update themes and plugins. We can create new blog posts. We can add media like PDF files, images, Word documents, zip files, movie files, and more. Here we can create pages like the home page, the about page, the shop page. People can leave comments on our website on blog posts or on pages if we want to on products. Here we can change the look and feel of our website. We can add new plugins. And if I click on it, and I click on add new. And I go to the popular ones. You can add a contact form. You can optimize your website for the search engines. You can use the Elementor page builder. Protect your website. WooCommerce, we're gonna add WooCommerce of course, so we can sell products on our website. We can add multiple users and give them some levels of accessibility so they can create new blog posts for us or adjust products, whatever we want them to do. Then we have extra tools. We have the main settings and then we have plugins installed. They will be placed over here. You can configure those plugins and work with them. If I want to switch between the back end and the front end, I can do it like that. Or I can go to this area, edit profile. Make sure the toolbar is turned on when viewing the site. And now when I click over here, I go to the front end and I see this bar. This bar is only visible because I am logged into my website. Okay, if you take a look at your website right now, it does not look that impressive. Not at all. We're going to make it look so much better. But first, I want to clean up a few things and configure a few things within our WordPress website. In order to clean up our website, I go to the back end. And the first thing I want to do, I want to dismiss this message over here. Then I want to collapse all those areas. 
If I want to get rid of them, I don't want to see this. I go to the screen options over here and I uncheck everything. So that looks better already. Then I want to go to the posts and then I can see all the posts. There's an example post. I want to view that one. What I see over here, garderobe24.com forward slash hello world. This is exactly what I want to see. I don't want to see something like the question mark one, two, three, because that is ugly. So if you want to make sure everything looks great here at your, at your URL or you see something else, go to the back end to settings, permalinks, make sure post name is selected. If you use plain, you save it. You go to the posts and view the post and it looks like that. That's not what you want. You want it to be post name, permalinks, post name, save the changes. I go back to the posts and I want to bring this to the trash, go to the trash and empty the trash. The same goes for pages. I have a few pages. I want to select them all by clicking here Then I select them all. Bulk actions, move to the trash, apply. I go to the trash and I empty the trash. Then we go to appearance, themes, and the theme decides the look and feel of your website. We're going to talk about it later. But right now, I want to get rid of all the themes I do not use, which is this one. And then I click on theme details, delete. Okay. Theme details, delete. Okay. And I want to go to the plugins. You see, I use two plugins, SiteGround Optimizer and SiteGround Security. I select them both by clicking here, Build Actions, Deactivate, Apply. Select them again. And since they are deactivated, I can remove them by clicking here, Delete. Apply. Are you really sure? Yes. Okay. Then I go to my profile here or at users profile. And over here, I can change the look of view or the colors of my back end. And I use the default one and we scroll down. I can leave my first name over here and my last name over here. Right now, when I place something on my website, it will say written by Ferdy Corp. That's my name. I want to change that to my first name and last name. I can do that over here at display name publicity as 30 corporate shook. And now it looks like that. That's better. Okay. Then I see my email over here and my website. I can place some information about myself. So if I write a blog post, the text will appear below that blog post if I want to. And I can change my profile picture. And that is linked to a Gravitor account, which is free. I open this in a new tab. What you need to do, the email address you use over here. You need to use it to sign up or sign in or create my Gravatar. And then when I do that and I upload an image, that image will be linked to my WordPress website. Well, I have an account at info at 30 corpushook.com that's already linked with Gravatar. So I click on update. Then I need to confirm my email address. So I will do that. There it is. And now I see my image. Why? I have a Gravitar account with info at 30 which is this image. So now when I place a blog post and my image will appear over here, I can create a new password. I can update my profile. So the front end, which looks ugly and the back end and the back end looks better right now. I want to do one more thing, go to settings general. We're going to create a, create a site title later, a tagline. I want to create an S or add an S over here. And if I do that, I probably need to log in again. Then I want to scroll down. I want to change the time zone. Depending on where you live. I live in uh, the Netherlands. So I choose Amsterdam. Find the city nearby. So the time um, zone will be changed automatically. And then the date format. May 10, 2022. You can also change it in some places in the world. It's displayed different. And the time format, I like to use the capitals PM and AM. And then I click on save the changes. Okay, let's take a look at the site title. Depending on what your website is about. If we go to Google and we search for Nike shoes. I skip all the ads. 
Nike, just do it. Okay. Nike online buying. So what you see, I search for Nike. That's the first word. And what I also see in the search result, Nike is almost every time the first word, Nike, Nike, Nike. So it's really important to have some keywords at the left of your site title. So if your company name is Carter Rope 24, people that are searching for clothes, or clothing are not searching for Garderobe or Garderobe 24 because they don't know my company. What they're searching for is summer clothes, clothes, so it's a hard word, Garderobe and clothes. Why did I choose this subject in my website? I don't know. If I search for this, Look at this. There's, there are a few ads. Holiday outfits, summer clothing, holiday dresses, summer outfits, holiday clothes. So you see, it's totally at the left. So it's really important to have some great keywords and there are keyword tools, keyword tools to find um, what people are searching for. So I can search for clothing. And people are searching for clothing, almost 2 million per month. Clothing stores near me. If I click over here. And then over here, this can give me inspiration for the right search term. But it's really, or the right keyword. It's really important to put in your title keywords that you want to be found on. So maybe summer clothing is better. And then after that, you can say Carter Rope 24. You're, you're the title. Clothes for ladies. I don't know, something like that. Something like that. And over here I can say high quality clothes for a great price. It's really important to have a good title with good keywords, clothes, ladies, or women. Safe. I close this and if we go to the front end, now I also see this title over here and I see it over here. One important thing you need to do, you need to confirm your website. So if we log in at SiteGround and we log in over here, JK24, what I see over here, I need to verify my domain carderobi24.com. If I don't do that, it can disappear. So I click on view domain. So I need to go to my Gmail account over here and confirm it. So I go to my Gmail account, SiteGround verification required. It's already the, the second email or the third. I don't know. I click here, scroll down and I click on approve. And I'm Okay, with this information and I verify the information. If I did not do that, let me see, within seven days from this day on, my website would be offline and I don't want that because I'm already selling products. So really important to, to approve your domain. And now when you come back in a few days or maybe Im immediately, it is now 20 minutes later and this message is gone. So it means our domain name is confirmed. Since I'm here at my site ground, I want to show you something really important. Let's go to websites. I go to the site tools of Garderobe 24. Then I want to go to speed caching. SiteGround is all about speed. So they have an amazing super cacher that will make your website super fast. But the thing is when you're adjusting your website, it can be that those adjustments will not be displayed at once. Well, when you make a website, that's a big thing because we want to see the results that we adjusted. So in order to see the results of everything you configure in your website, you need to go to dynamic cache and then over here, flush the cache. But it's not a fun process to flush the cache all the time when you change something in your website. So for now, I want to go to this tab and I want to turn the super cacher off over here. And now when we adjust things in our website, we see the results immediately. And then when you're finished with your website, go back to this place and turn it back on. We want to create a professional web shop. And in order to do that, we need to have the best WordPress theme. What is a WordPress theme? A theme decides the look and feel of a website. So you have the content, the title of your website, all the content, blog posts, products, that's all the same. 
But when you change the theme, it will change the look and feel of how all that content is displayed. And I've been searching for the best theme and I found it. It's the Bloxy theme at this moment. It's free. We're going to use it. And let me show you how we can install that theme. In order to change the look and feel of our website, we go to 30corp.com forward slash Bloxy. Hit enter. Then we can go for the free download. We can download it over here. I close this and I close this. Then I go to the back end of our website by clicking here. I go to appearance themes. I can click on add new upload theme and then I can choose a file or I can drag this one over here or I go to appearance themes add new and search for Bloxy. They're also there. I click on install. And then I want to activate it. And now we have a different theme and every theme gives a different look and feel. So if I would go to the website right now, holding command or control while clicking, so it opens in the new tab, it looks different now. So that's what I mean with the look and feel of our website that can be changed by the theme we use. But not only that, every theme also has their own functionalities. And the Bloxy theme has a lot of extra functionalities, which makes it, in my opinion, the best free theme out there at this moment. When we installed the Bloxy theme, we also need to install the Bloxy companion, which gives our website more functionalities. And then I want to skip this. And what do I mean with extra functionalities? If I go to starter sites, I can import a complete website. I can view it over here. This website, it looks amazing, really clean. It's a web shop. This can be installed for free with a few clicks. Look at this. It sticks with us. And what you need to do is adjust the information. This, this is crazy that we can do this these days. So another one, you can choose between a lot of really nice starter sites. And then we have extensions. For instance, the cookie consent, really nice that we have it within our WordPress theme. I just have to activate it. And then when I go to the website, when people visit the website for the first time, we need to accept it. And it's mandatory in a lot of places in the world. And we don't need to have an extra plugin for that. It's included in the Bloxy theme. How great is that? Bloxy extensions. Later, we're going to talk about more extensions. Why is this all for free? Well, they want to sell you their pro version, which you can find over here. And then you have even more additions. But we're going to work with the free version in this tutorial. Over here, you can see free versus pro. You see a lot of things are included in the free version. And for me, that's enough. So it still does look that great, but it looks a little bit better. Step by step, we're going to make something beautiful. Okay, before we're going to install WooCommerce and create products, I want to change a few things because we have to look at it all the time. Right now we see a WordPress icon over here and I see this as the logo. I see that I don't have a menu yet. Here it says ready to publish your first post, get started here. So I want to do a few things. And the first thing I want to go to the customizer and upload a logo. If you want to use the same images I use in this tutorial, you can go to 30corp.com forward slash images, pay me $50 and they are yours. <laughs> was that funny? No, it was not funny. You download the images over here and I personally prefer to bring them, bring them to the desktop. And then over here you can choose at number six, a few fave icons, a few logos. And then for this tutorial, I created this. If you don't like the color, well, maybe you're good and uh, at um, Photoshop, you can change the color. I will use this logo. And why? If I take a look at summer dresses 2022 and I click on a few images, what do I, what kind of logos do I see? H and M naked without, and, and the A is quite a kind of funny. Um, here a word H M shine capitals. So, I got my inspiration and uh, I created a simple logo for my shop. In order to upload my logo, I click over here and then I click on select logo, select files. And now I can select a logo from my computer first. Let me go to the desktop images tutorial number six, garderobe 24. 
and I want to go for the colored logo and I created this cool huh? in Photoshop. Then I always copy the title, paste it in the alt text and in the description. And then I select that logo. Then I want to turn off the title here below. I want to make the logo height smaller until I'm satisfied. 26. Okay. Then I go back over here. I go back one more time and I scroll down all the way. Then I see site identity. I want to change this fave icon to one I have created. Upload files, select one and I go for the fave icon. Why this color? When I think about summer, I think about these colors. And this is a lady's bag for dresses they can buy in my web shop. I skipped the, the, the cropping. Now it looks like that. And it's not that good because you hardly can see the 24. So maybe I should change that. And that's how I roll. I keep on learning while I'm creating tutorials. But right now I'm happy with this logo. Uh, when we install WooCommerce, we can create a menu over here. And when we install WooCommerce, we can make the shop our homepage. So we'll do that later. I close this. And then it is time to install WooCommerce. Hi guys, are you still having fun? And ladies, I hope so. Um, we're going to install WooCommerce. What is WooCommerce? WooCommerce is a plugin, an ex extension that will turn your website into a web shop. Well, it can be that you already have a website and you want to extend it with a web shop. It can also be that you're following this tutorial from scratch. In both cases, I got you covered. I will show you how to add a web shop to your current website. And I will also show you how to create a website from scratch around your web shop shop shop. And, um, I don't want to record this part again, so I will leave it in. It's fine. And um, WooCommerce is amazing. It helps you to create a lot of products. It helps you to create, uh, to automate a lot of stuff, payment providers, shipping costs, coupon codes. Uh, and with the Bloxy theme, everything will be displayed beautiful. Instead of talking about it, let me show you how to install WooCommerce. In order to install WooCommerce, we need to go to the back end of our website. So I go to the back to plugins at new and then over here i search for woocommerce there it is more than 5 million installations and 5 is the max so maybe it's 50 million already it's updated four weeks ago and it's compatible with the current version of wordpress and i click on install now it's installed i click on activate and now we see a setup over here so we need to fill in a few details. You can skip this, but you need to add your address to your website. So I will fill in mine. Jan Luikenstraat, number 36 in the Netherlands. And the city, postcode, postal code. And my email address will be this one. I don't need tips. So I turn this off and I click on continue. And do we want to build a better WooCommerce? Well, I think it's so great already. So I say no thanks. Okay, what do I want to sell? Well, uh, we're going to create a few different kinds of products. But the, the main thing I want to sell is clothing. So fashion, I turn it on. I click on continue. I want to sell physical products and downloadable products. I click and I don't do anything with this. It's just a little bit of uh, advertisement. I don't want that. Continue. I plan to sell between 11 and 100 products and I do not sell anywhere else. If you set this up for a client store, you can turn this on. I click on continue. I turn this off and then I click on continue. And I want to continue with my active theme, which is the Bloxy theme. So I click here. Okay, now we have set up WooCommerce. I need to update two things. If you want that, uh, you need to click here or go to the dashboard updates. And Bloxy Companion has an update. Great. And then the other one, Bloxy theme. Update theme. Okay, let's take a look at our website. We have our logo and now, look at this. We have those four areas over here. We have the cart, 
when people put things in their basket, they can see it over here. When they are ready to go to the checkout, they go to this page. They cannot go there because <laughs> their cart is empty. Then you have your own account. When people buy something, they can see what they have bought. If they have bought a physical downloadable product, they can find it over here. They can see their account details and they can log out. And then they have the shop. Well, there are no products here yet. If you click on the logo, you go to the homepage and then it says ready to publish your first post. But over here, I want to show my web shop. So when people come to my website, I want to show them my shop. In order to configure that, I go to the customizer. I scroll down then I go to homepage settings and I change this from our latest post that will display to a static page. And then I select the shop page. I publish it. So right now on the homepage of garderobe24.com, people will see the products, but I don't have products yet. Okay, people, it is time to start creating our first product. We're going to create six different products and we're going to start with a simple product. And let me show you how it is done. And personally, I think this is the nice part of the tutorial. Now it's getting really fun. We're going to create our own products. And through this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a various amount of products, different kind of products. But let's start with the first one, a simple product. Okay, let's get started. In order to create our first product, we can hover over new and then create a product or we go to the back end by clicking here. Then you can go, wait, let's hide that. You can go to products, add new or all products and create a product. Well, it depends on how you feel. If you want to go through this way, through that way, or through this way. Well, I feel like going to the front end and then to new product. As I said, we are going to create six different kinds of products. And I want to start with the simplest one and show you how you can configure and create a product. First, we need to have a name for the product. Well, if we go to the internet and we search for Nike shoes, let's see how they are called. This one is called the Nike Go Fly Ease. So the brand and then the title of the shoe. So if you have uh, a brand in something you sell, you can say a Nike hoodie. Well, for me, it's just a hoodie. So I give this a title hoodie. What you also see if you search for t-shirts. You see t-shirt and then uh, you see the fabrics. T-shirt with short sleeves. T-shirt, uh, create your own. So you can call this, uh, you can call it t-shirt or you can say t-shirt with uh, cotton or t-shirt with crew neck or t-shirt with big logo. I call this one a simple hoodie. Then we can have a description. And in order to create a description, I go for dummy text. So I, uh, I search for dummy text generator. Go for the first one and grab this text. I copy it. I use dummy text because if I would just copy and paste text from the internet somewhere, I can get into trouble because then I use text that's maybe copyrighted. So with this text, you're sure you are safe. And then you can fill up your website with content and you can see how it will look. What I want to do, I want to click on publish. And then I want to hold command or control while clicking here. So I open this in the new tab. Then I go to the home page and over here I see our first product. Wow. No image, the title, and we can read more. If I click over here, I see the product, no image, no category, only a title. That's it, not even a price. But here, here below, we see the description. Keep in mind that the description can be really handy for the search results. Because if you talk more about this hoodie, about what it is, how it how it feels, what's so special about this hoodie, and people search for that on the internet, a hoodie with this specialty, they can find your product because you have written about it in the long description. There's also a short description over here below. So I can say when you wear this hoodie, your life will change. Friends become friendlier. 
and you will become popular wherever you go. And now if I update it, this short description will appear below the title. So if I refresh the page on a Mac command R on a PC F5, you'll see it over here. So step by step, we're going to build this into a beautiful product with a lot of information about the product. So people know if they want to buy this or not. But if people see this, of course, they're not going to buy it because they don't even see what it is. So that's what we're doing here. We're making this product better. Right now, we work with euros. I don't want that. So in order to change that, we go to WooCommerce settings. And then the first step general, we scroll down. And I want to change the currency to United States dollars. And I think with dollars, you have the two comma club. That means you have a 1 million in sales. So a thousand separators should be a comma. Otherwise it's the two dots club. And then the decimal separator is a point. And of course, the number of decimals should be two. So now if I go back to the website, to the product, I can click over here on edit product. Or you go to the back end to products, all products. You see it over here, you can edit it. And then you see the price in dollars. Well, the regular price for this hoodie is 49 dot. 95. If I update it, it will look like that. You'll see that. And now people can add this to the cart. Let me show you this. This is what WooCommerce does for us. I click on add to the cart. Now I can go and view the cart. Here's the cart with the subtotal and the total. Now I can proceed to the checkout. I can fill in my details. There's no payment option yet, but if there was, I could place my order and look how beautiful everything looks. WooCommerce is creating all this stuff and then the Bloxy theme is styling it all in a beautiful way and makes this float and stuff. I really like the combination of WooCommerce and the Bloxy theme. So I go back to the homepage, to the hoodie. And I want to give this a discount. How can I do that? I scroll down again to the product data general. And by the way, if you don't see this or you don't see something else, go to the screen options. And there you should be able to turn it on so you can see it. The sale price, I can say, you know what? It's on sale for $39.95. Maybe uh, you're at the end of the summer and you want to sell a few extra dresses or hoodies or whatever. They can say, you know what? There's a sale price and you, in that way you can increase the sales. Especially when you have an email list, you can build an email list by giving people discount. And then uh, in exchange for their email address, they get discount. So you build your email list and then you say, hey, there's a big discount on this hoodie. You send it to 20,000 people and a lot of people can buy it. And then you can make profit. I can also say this will only be available from today until the 31st May 2022. If I update it and I refresh the page, you see it's discounted. And if I go to the shop, it will say sale. Then there are more tabs over here. Uh, I did not tell you before, but it's a simple product. What is a simple product? It only has one size and one color. There are no variations. This is what you get. So that will be great if you sell a cap in one color, one size. It's not virtual. It's not downloadable. It's a physical product. So I don't check these. Here at General, we discuss the price, the sale, and the amount of time for the sale. Then we can go to Inventory. There's the SKU number. Well, if you would sell a specific branded product, for instance, a Nike hoodie, if you would sell exact this exact product, then you can scroll down over here and search for the SKU, this one. That means that if you are here at Nike.com and Nike says, hey, sorry, we are, are, are out of stock and people are smart and they think, okay, they're out of stock. I search based on this SKU number. And I paste over here to see where else I can buy this. You see it's everywhere, almost everywhere the same. So when they cannot find it on Nike, your website can appear over here when you use this SKU number. So definitely when you use, when you sell a Nike uh, branded, when you sell branded products, always try to find 
the SKU number. If you don't have it, you can create your own one. It can be anything. It can be uh, G D B for garter rope, 24 and then zero, whatever. And then when people have questions about a certain product and they send the email, they can fill in the SKU number and you know, hey, it's about this particular product. I will keep it really simple for the sake of the tutorial. I will call this one GDB0001. Do I want to enable stock management? Yes. So I can say right now I just bought 20 of these hoodies so people can buy 20. If I update it and I refresh the page, what it will say there are 20 in stock. So when somebody buys one, it will say there are only 19 in stock. Really nice. Inventory. Do we want to allow back orders? You can say do not allow. When you say do not allow, and I want to buy 21, it will say value must be less or equal to 20. But if I say, you know what, allow, but notify the customer, people can order as much as they want, but when they order more than I have in stock, then I will have a warning on my website saying, hey, Keep in mind that I don't have these in stock, but they will go to you as fast as possible. I personally do not like that. So if I would refresh the page, now it says they can be back ordered. So I can order 50, add them to the cart. If I view the cart, I have 51 and they are available on back order. And I personally don't like it because then people don't know when they will arrive. It can be three weeks and people don't want to wait. So I personally don't like to use that option. I can also allow it and do not even notify the customer. And then if I go to the product, it will say 20 in stock. But if I say I want to buy 60, it says you have added 60, but then you have a problem. <laughs> if somebody buys 111, this looks nice, of course, but then you need to uh, deliver them. And maybe uh, they, they don't have them in stock at the place where you buy them and then you can be in trouble. So I personally would not use those two options, back orders, do not allow. Um, what you can do at the low stock threshold, you can say if I have five left, I want to receive an email from my website saying, hey, Ferdy, there are only five left. Or if you have a different name, your name will be called in that email automatically. And it depends, it depends on the product because maybe you have a product that sells uh, five pieces per day. Well, then you will be out of stock in four days. So then you can say, uh, let me know when I only have 18 left. So uh, I can also do this by default. So low stock threshold. If I would update this, and I go to WooCommerce settings, and then I go to products. I go to the second tab over here, inventory. Inventor, inventory, <laughs> low stock threshold. I can bring this to eight. So if I've only eight products left of a certain product or a certain size or a certain color, I will get a notification and then I can order the same product again. So I will always have it available in my store. So I go to the web shop again, edit product. And now by default, it will say eight. So I can change it over here. If I know this is being sold 15 times per day, then I need to have a warning when I only have 60 left in store. So that's it about inventory shipping. We're going to take a look later at shipping, but right now I want to say in, in kilograms, you can change the weight and based on the weight, you can decide how much people need to pay for the shipping cost. Well, maybe you're not familiar with kilogram. If you want to fix that, we go to WooCommerce settings, products again, and over here at the weight unit, we can change it to ounce, is it ounce, LBS, and we can also change this to inch. I have to say I'm not that familiar with it. I think in kilograms and in centimeters and meters, but uh, that's where you can change that. Let's go back to the product, edit the product. Are you still having fun? I hope so. This should be the fun part of the tutorial. So if this is not fun for you, uh, I hope somehow I will become incredibly funny. So it's easier for you to go through the tutorial. You can do this. 
So now it's LBS and I can change the weight and then based on the weight of what people sell or of what people buy, they need to pay a certain amount of shipping cost. So I will leave it as this linked products. That's for later upsells, cross sells, because I only have one product, so I cannot have an upsell. And then this is something for another time only at advance. I want to show you if people purchase this hoodie, I can give a personal note or a note that is attached to this hoodie. You bought this hoodie. I know this will change your life for the good forever. And here's the menu order. So if I buy 10 different products, uh, which one should be on top? You can create a custom order order at the cart. So if you have three different products, which one should be on top? Uh, I leave this empty. Then let's talk about reviews. When I go to this hoodie, I have the description, the long description, but I also have reviews. And since I'm logged in, I can give this a rating of five and I say this hoodie changed my life. I was cold and had no friends. Now I am warm and I have too many friends. Submit much, many, I still don't know when you should say which one. So now we have a review and since I'm the administrator, it's added immediately. And now when I go to the homepage, I see the five stars. So when somebody else will give four stars, I will see four and a half stars over here. So that's it about reviews. Then I can go to the right. I can say that this product should not be published pending. So I can let someone else create all these products, put them on pending. I will check them if they have created them the right way. And then um, I can say, okay, it's okay. Publish it. Visibility, same thing. I can make it password protected or private. I can say it will be published from a certain day. So maybe you're selling a video game that will be released on a certain day. And on that day, you want it to be in store. So the, the 15th of May, something new will be um, in store from 9 a.m. And then you can schedule it like that. And if I would change this to 15, okay, it will say schedule instead of uh, publish. I bring it back to 10. Do I want this to be in the, in the uh, visible in the catalog? This is the catalog. And if I say... Search and results only. Okay. Update. It will not be in the catalog. But if people search for it, hoodie, it will be found over here. We'll talk about this later because then there's a nice way how you can use it and uh, sell more products. So right now I say show it in the shop and the search results. And I can also make this a featured product. Update. Then let's talk about categories. If I go to the Nike website, I'm sorry, it's a Dutch website, but what I see over here is new releases, men, ladies, kids, sale and collections. All those titles are categories and everything you see over here are subcategories. And that's a way to give structure to your website, especially when you sell a lot of products. So that's what we're also going to do. We're going to create structure in our website by using categories. Right now, everything is uncategorized. If I go to the homepage, it does just does not look appealing when I click over here and I see uncategorized. So hoodie is for, this can be for men. So I can say men. And then I can create a subcategory. I don't want this to be a category. I can say Hoodies and hoodies can be a subcategory of men. And then I add to this category and now I have a subcategory. If I would update it, which I will, and I refresh the page, home, men, hoodies, hoodie. This is great. This gives structure. And now when people want to go to hoodies, they will see a catalog with all the hoodies in my website. So as soon as I give a product, the category hoodie, it will appear over here. And in that way, you can key, create a beautiful structure in your website, also in the menu, like uh, men, uh, like they did over here, gentleman, and then sh uh, uh, featured shoes, clothes, sports, and then subcategories. And then if I would go for soccer, 
I only see all the products that have soccer as a category. The same is with text, but with text, there's less structure. So I can say black because it's a black hoodie. And if I say comma, then I can say something else. The tag um, hoodie, cotton, cotton, polyester. And if I click on add, I have three tags. And based on those tags, I can also bring on a bit structure in my website. So if I view the product, and I go over here to the tags and I click on black. I will see all the products with the tag called black. So with categories and with tags, you can create structure in your website. And then really important, of course, we need to have an image over here. Otherwise, who will buy this if they don't see what they are buying? So make appealing images. Don't make crappy images. Product image, set product image. I click on upload files, select files. And if you are following along with the images I use, you can go to images tutorial, WooCommerce, and then there's the hoodie back, the side and the front. I hold shift up, up. So I select three images at the same time. I click on open and I can select only one as a featured image. And that is this one, the front. Then. I create a space over here, copy this, paste it in the alt text and paste it in the description. Same I can do with this one, hoodie side and back, hoodie back. And then I select the front, set the product image. And now it starts to look really nice. If I refresh the page, yes, nice. If I click on it, I see it over here. I can uh, zoom like that. I think, okay, I like it. What else I can do here below the featured image, I can have the product gallery. So I can add those other products over there. And when I do that, WooCommerce and the Bloxy theme will create something amazing for us. Refresh. Now I can navigate through the images also here. And uh, I have to say, they like that. So those are the basic settings of creating a product. As I said, we're going to create multiple products, different products. But right now, this is what we have. Our first product, it's on sale from $49.95 to $39.95. We see an image, a short description, the inventory. How many do I want to add to the cart? Now we cannot do it because there is no more back ordering. The SKU, the categories and the tags. And then over here we have the long description and the reviews. If I would open this website in a new tab uh, as an incognito person, so I'm not logged in, no cookies. Okay, I scroll down, I see the product. Let's say I bought it. I'm so happy with it that I want to leave a review. I can click over here and I say, uh, whoa, thing about becoming Popular is so true. I thought it was a joke. I have great friends now. Thank you. Shores, I select a rating of five, of course. Submit. Shores, then heymelen at gmail.com. I can save my details for the next time I submit it. And it's awaiting approval. So if I refresh website or I go to the back end, I see a comment. I can bring it to the trash or to the spam. I can approve it. I can reply. Great to hear that source. Reply. And I want to edit it because I made an error. Great to hear that update. Now when I go to the product, there are two reviews and one reaction. Great. There can be a third tab if I edit the product. I go to inventory and I say, let's say 
0.4 kilograms to LBS. 0,88. So I can say 0 or let's say 1. Update. I view the product and now I see a third tab in the center additional information and then the weight is 1 LBS. Okay. What I don't like is that the screen is really big. The website is really big. So if I want to make it smaller, I can go to the customizer. Hover over here so you see the image. Then I go to WooCommerce, single product. I want to use a smaller width like that. I can also make it boxed, which I also like a lot. Uh, we're going to take a look at those settings later, but right now I like this more. So I click on publish. Close this. I think it's also for you easier on the eye to display things like this. So that was our first product. So let's create a second product and this time it will be a variable product. I will explain to you what I mean. I go to new product and this time I want to sell a t-shirt with multiple sizes and multiple colors. So first I will talk about the name t-shirt. We talked about the long description and the short description. I want to go to product data and I want to change the simple product to a variable product because we want to have more variables. SKU, GDB, something like that. I want to enable stock management, but I want to do that based on every size, and every color. So I will go to attributes and now we can add attributes. A custom product attribute. I click on add and I can give this a name. Well, what I want to have is the attribute called size. And over here I can enter the value. So uh, size, I want to have XS or S. And then I need to use this symbol to separate them. M, L and XL. I can also say small, medium, etc. or 36, 38, 40, etc. I will use S, M, L and XL. Then I need to check this. I want to use this for variations. I save the attributes and then I want to create a second attribute clicking on add. And this time it is color. I want to have two colors black and white. So I check this again. I save the attributes and now I want to combine those attributes. I can do that at variations. So I click on add variation and then I say create variations from all attributes. Go. Are you sure? Yes. And then it says eight variations are added. That means people can buy a black t-shirt that is the, has the size S a white t-shirt with the size S, black t-shirt with XL, etc. So there are eight variations. It seems to get stuck. So I publish it. Let me view the product. And it seems not to work yet. So I go back and add a product before. I will update everything over here. Select this, update plugins. Okay. Then I go to the update icon again and update the Bloxy theme. Great. I go back to the website, to the t-shirt and edit the product. And then I go to the variations again and yes, it works. Okay. What I want to do, it says the eight variations do not have prizes. Variations and their attributes that, that do not have prices will not be shown in your store. So that's the reason why I see nothing over here. So I can expand all those variations and then I can place a price over here and then copy it and paste it. Or I scroll up and I click on, let's see, set regular prices. If I click on go, it will set the regular price for all the eight variations. It will save me time. So I say 19.95. Okay. Update. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
and now it says we can choose the size s and we can choose black we don't see images how can we add images scroll down to the variations expand them all and here per variation i want to add the images so i click here i want to have a black t-shirt so i upload files select files and in my folder you will find those four images about the t-shirt then i click over here i'm searching for black front yes okay then i scroll down white black you only have to do this once so uh, i'm okay to do this just think hey i'm building my webshop web shop. i'm gonna sell things and the more effort i put in it the more rewarding it feels probably when i start to sell things although it would also be great to not put a lot of effort in it and still make a lot of money that's what we probably all want but uh, this is okay update when i refresh the page i will not see an image over here but when i choose the option m and black now an image appears why because at the variations every different variation has an image but if i go to the right hand area product image there's no product image yet so i will set one which is the white t-shirt and then the front and then at the gallery i want to have the other three images so we're getting there step by step so by default there's a white t-shirt i can click here see the back see the front of the black t-shirt and the back those images are way too dark <laughs> i don't see what the front is in the back so now if i say s black i see black image if i choose white i see the white image so that's what i really like and if i add this to the card i will have the size s and the color white and that's what i will see so if i view the card t-shirt as white let me remove this if i go back to the product and i go for size xl and black and i add it to the card and i view the card i have twice the same product but one is size s and white and the other one is xl and black so i have one product and multiple variations and people can buy those what else can we do if I go to the product, I can go to variations and I can say that I want to enable the stock, toggle manage stock. So if I say go, now the stock is toggled. So here we see manage stock checked and also over here everywhere. So now we need to have stock because right now we don't have stock. And I think since we manage stock, it's now all out of stock yes out of stock so i can buy 10 products of every variation so i will have 80 t-shirts 10 small white 10 xl black etc and if i want to set that um i go to stock go and i say 10 that means that i say that the stock for every product is 10 but maybe you know that size black will be sold less than l black so I can also say that for the, all the small sizes, I only have five in stock. And also here, five. Uh, be careful. I want to update it over here, but first I need to update it over here. Otherwise I can lose information and changes. Um, so I need to scroll down all the way, save the changes here, and then update. Now, if I refresh the page, size S and white, five in stock, but size M and white, I have 10 in stock. And if I buy one, of course, it will become nine. It's all on automatic pilot. I go back to variations and I expand them all. And maybe I'm like, yeah, but the XL version, the XL version of both over here, they are more, they are, they need to be uh, a little bit more expensive. So those are not 1995 but 2495. The same goes for the white version. Okay, let's test it. If I don't save it here, but I do update it here. 
and I refresh the page. Okay, it seems to work. So you don't have to uh, save it there below because now if I go to XL, this is 24.95. If I go for an L, it's 90.95. And that's the great thing about all those variations. We can all give them specific prices, stock. We can put those on sale. So for every individual variation, we can change things over here. The size, the weight, the size, dimensions, the low stock threshold. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. And don't we all like flexibility? Especially when it comes to, I don't know. So a few more things. I can create a small description. All these t-shirts have been worn by 30 Corpus Hook and they have not been washed. So you can easily sell those on the internet for $10,000. But first, buy them I'm here. Wow, something like that. And um, also here, categories. I don't want to have the category uncategorized. I click on new category and it has the parent men. And I say t shirts. Add the new subcategory men and t shirts. Also here, t shirt, comma, black, white, cotton. I add them all. I can add a review. Whoa, they smell great. Update. Let's take a look. There's the text. So now if I go to the shop, I see two products. One is on sale, one is not. Over here, I can add it to the cart. Over here, I can select the options. Why? Here, there's only one version and here there are multiple options. And then we can choose a size. Add them to the cart. View the cart. Okay, then I go to the shop again. I also want to buy that hoodie. View the cart. I can proceed to the checkout. And it all looks beautiful. We can place our order. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now I can create a third product by going to new product. And this product is a coaching call with 30. I go to the short description and I say, ask me anything about my expertise. Expertise, is that a dirt, uh, good, good word? For instance, about affiliate marketing or becoming a worldwide known male model. I know a lot about a lot about those subjects, especially male modeling. It's a hard world, you know. It's it. Sometimes people ask me, "How is it for you to be so good looking?" And um, people are shocked with, with what I say. I say, uh, I'm not that good looking. No, for no, you are. Yeah, those are the conversations I, I, I have with people. Conversations. Weird. Okay. This is a simple product. There's only one version of it. It's a virtual product. It's not a downloadable product. It's a service I offer. You can also sell tickets this way. So people can buy a virtual ticket. It's not... It's not downloadable. Uh, so the product is a coaching call with me. Um, the session is about 90 minutes. Minutes. And I charge $299. I do not give any discount inventory. There's no none. G D B. I don't need stock, but what I do want to have, I want to sell this individually. So people cannot buy this five times. So 
So I have to talk with them for five times, 90 minutes. Now I only want to sell this as one single product. Okay, then I go to the categories, coaching, new category. I can have product tags, 30, coaching call, Google, meet. Product image. I have an image of myself from 2013. This one. There was the, I think three weeks after I uploaded my first video and then I did not follow through. And uh, six months later, I decided to give YouTube another shot to really go for it. And now I can do this for a living. Only one product. I publish it. Let's see how it looks. I view the product. Coaching call with 30. I can add it to the cart. I cannot buy 10 of it, only one. The categories, SKU, tags, reviews. And uh, talking about tags, if I go to the shop and I go to t shirts and I click on men, I see all the products that have the category men. So we're getting our structure that we want, especially when you have a lot of products in your website. So, um, yeah, this is it. Short description over here. No reviews yet. If I don't want reviews, I can also edit the product. And let's see if I can do that over here. Um, I don't know. What I can do, I can go to all products. Quick edit. Now I can turn off enable reviews. That's always how I do it. So I don't even know how to do it on the big screen, on the big editing page. Maybe somewhere over here. Yeah, I think so. Somewhere here. Advanced. Yeah, of course. Of, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, it's not funny. And again, I can give some purchase notes or maybe again, maybe not again. I did not tell you yet, but I think so. But I can say over here, thank you for investing in yourself as soon as we receive your payment we will reach out for you or to you and make an appointment or just give them a calendly link and then they can book an appointment with me update by the way coaching man that business is amazing last year i did something interesting i paid $37,000 for a coach, a coach in the Netherlands. He was going to help me selling my affiliate marketing course. Uh, and I said to him, I want to do it in a, a way that is, uh, how do you say that? Um, in integrity. Like I want to sell with integrity, not sell people by pushing all their emotional buttons. And I want to sell it a lot because I think the course is really great. I still have that course. And he said, I know I can help you. And then I need to do a lot of weird things like buy an expensive watch put it on Instagram, <laughs> uh, hire a Lamborghini and put it on Instagram and uh, buy expensive clothes and, and come across like a very wealthy person. I was like, oh, that's so not me. So uh, I asked a refund. He could keep a little bit of money, a lot of money. And I got a lot of money back. So, uh, but the coaching uh, call industry, the coaching industry is a big industry, but be careful for people that just want to make sales because you can sell anything if you learn how to do that and people know how to trigger you so you will buy things. So that's a free, a free addition to this free tutorial. Be careful with what you buy on the internet because you can get burned very hard. I'm happy I got my money back 75% and the rest I said to him, you can have it. I'm already happy that I get my money back because I need it for other things. So that was my frustration. We created a beautiful uh, coaching call product and now it's time to create another product. I click on new product. We're going to create a digital downloadable product and I have an ebook, ebook called how to become an online entrepreneur. It is a simple product. It's a virtual product and it's a downloadable product and I sell it to you for just 14 $1.95. Normally I sell this for free, so please don't buy this. By the way, this whole shop is fake. It's not real. I don't give coaching calls. There's no sale. And over here I want to add the file. 
I can choose a file, upload, select files. I go to my desktop. There it is. Just 254 kilobytes. So you can sell digital stuff. It's amazing. It's amazing. I copy the URL and I give this a title, uh, how to become an online entrepreneur and I paste the code. How many times can people download it after they buy it? Well, all in the times when does the download expire? I can say after 10 days, but also for me, never. Then I click on product image, upload files. I have uh, another digital product bought it. It will uh, turn my image into a book layout. It's called, uh, how's it called? A mock-up. And also there is a digital product that people can sell. So you can sell digital stuff on your website. If you go to themeforest.net, WordPress, popular themes, this one is $60. In the last week or maybe month, but I think week, it's sold 2000 times. That's a lot of money. And then the theme forest gets a bit, but this is all digital, all code, all files. So uh, it's an, an interesting world, the world of digital products. And if you take a look at uh, Adobe, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Photoshop, all digital stuff. When you can create a tool, a plugin, something, you can sell it unlimited times. That's very interesting. So I can create a category ebooks, ebook entrepreneur. I can edit and uh, then I'm satisfied. Maybe also go to inventory sold individually. Update, view the product, and there it is. Add it to the cart and you're good to go. What else? Also a really interesting world, the world of affiliate marketing. If you want to learn more about that, search for affiliate marketing 30, six hour course. Also this one, six hours and not that much views. I don't get it, but um, hey, it's up to people if they want to watch it or not. More tutorials about that on how to start with affiliate marketing. So what I can do, I can sell Elementor Pro. And this time it is a external affiliate product and the product URL. I need to have an affiliate link for that. So I go to my affiliate network and I copy my link and I paste my affiliate link. And I say get Elementor as a button text. The regular price is $49, I think. Product image. Upload files, select files, and here it is, Elementor, open. So there's also something you can do. You can um, publish, you can promote other people's products. And when people buy that through your unique affiliate link, you make money. So new category, plugins, uncheck, uncategorized, Elementor, WordPress, page builder. Atom. So let's see how that looks. View the product. Elemental Pro. Plugins. Get Elemental Pro. I click on it. And when people buy this now, so, so they go to plugin, they buy this one or maybe this one, I get a commission and I make money. How great is that? I think it's pretty great. Pretty great. So one more product we are going to create. Let me take a look at the shop. We already have five different products. Now we're going to create one more product. We're going to create a grouped product. So in this grouped product, I will create a parent product. And within that product, I want to show you three different products and I will show you how amazing that will look. So the parent product is a USB stick and this can be anything. It can be an iPhone. It can be anything that is one product, but that has multiple sizes or actually it can be anything. You can have five totally different products and line them up in one product and then people can choose how much they want to have of every product. So in this example, it's an USB stick. So I scroll down to the product data and I change this to a grouped 
product and the SKU is GDB. Five or six. I create a new category, which is electronics. I can have a subcategory sticks and the parent one is electronics. I can have text, USB, stick. It's okay. I want to have an image, product image, upload files, and I search for the USB. Copy, paste, paste, set the product image. Okay. Publish. Now when we go to the website, we see it over here. There's nothing in it. So that's what we're going to create right now. I hover over new product. This one I call 128 gigabyte USB stick. I don't use uh, product categories for this one. I do use an image. I want to select a price. So I call this one or I say it's 1995. And then over here, really important at publish, I need to go to the catalog visibility and I change this to hidden. Publish. And then I click on copy to a new draft. This one is 200. The six kilo, uh, kilobyte, no uh, gigabyte. I paste it over here and I change the price to $24.95. Publish. And then the third one, copy to a new draft. 512 USB stick. Copy. Paste. Publish. Let's do one more. Thousand twenty-four gigabyte USB stick. Copy. Edit. Paste. Okay. Publish. Okay. If I click on the home page, I go over here and I see nothing. I want to line up those products, so I click on Edit Product. I scroll down and over here, since it's a grouped product, I can go to linked products and here I can select them. If I say USB, I see those products. USB again, USB, and the latest one, USB. Okay. Update, view the product, and now I see them lining up like that. So we don't see all the individual products of the USB sticks, but over here we see the grouped products and I can select a few of all of them. If I add them to the cart, view the cart, I have selected all those products over here. So if I take a look at the shop, I see we created six different products, a simple product, just one size one piece, one color, that's it. Then variable product with multiple sizes, multiple colors, and we can give each variable different information. For instance, the price or the stock. Then the coaching call, that's the service product, add to the cart and the downloadable product, add to the cart and the affiliate product, People click on get element or they go to my affiliate link when they buy it i get money and then the grouped product great and now if you create a lot of those products your webshop will grow that's the best sentence i've used if you create more products your webshop will grow simple as that but before we do that i want to take a look at the look and feel of our webshop congratulations you created six different kind of products and those are actually all the kind of products you can place on your website. But now we have our website over here, but I want to make the look and feel better. And that's why we need the Bloxy theme. So let me show you how to customize the Bloxy theme in a way that our website becomes even better. 
So in order to change the look and feel of our web shop, I can go to the customizer and then I can scroll down all the way to WooCommerce and there are three areas. And this, what we have over here, when you see multiple products, that means that this is a product archive page. So if I click over here, product archives, I can adjust the information on this page. For instance, this area, if I don't want that, I turn it off and it's gone. That's how easy it is. If I turn it on and I click on the arrow, I can configure it. So I can select type one and it looks like that. Type two, I can say I want to show the breadcrumbs. Change the alignment. Change the container width. I can add an image to the background. And if I go to design, I can change the font color. I can make it bold. I can make it capitals. I can change the margin and the padding. So uh, there's a lot you can do. I go back and I go back and I turn it off. Then what I see over here, I have an image below that. There's a title and below that the price and add to cart. That's uh, type one of this card. If I change it to type two, it looks more like one area, one big card. I personally prefer it above this one, but hey, you can choose. I choose this one and then I see four columns. So four products in a row, I want to change that to three. So they become a bit bigger, but later we'll, we'll talk about the sidebar. So it will become a bit smaller again. And then the number of rows, I decide to have three, so I can have a total of nine products per page. Then we can go to the card options. This is a card. And what I see is that the quality of the image could be better. So if I click over here, I can change the image size to 600. And when I do that, the quality is better. So that's what I prefer. I can also change the aspect ratio, the image ratio, ratio, to 16 by nine, I can change it, but I prefer to have a square image. Make sure that when you do that, that everything looks great. Okay. Image hover effect, swipe images. That's what I prefer. So when I have this area and I hover over it, you see a different image. When you have a second image or zoom in. And a fourth free theme, man, this is so amazing. I, I emailed those guys last week. Hey guys, I'm making a new tutorial. Man, I'm so happy with your theme. It's, it's so amazing. I've, I've always been dreaming of a theme like this. And now it's there. I can show the categories over here. And I prefer to do that. And I don't want to have the add to cart button. So I turn that off and then it's gone. And automatically this will align to the center. The cards gap. I like to make it 20. If I say 50, you see there's a bigger gap and I like 20 pixels. So for me, this looks amazing. And then we can go to design, change the colors and change the font. For now, I leave it as it is only the, the radius of the border of the card. I can make it 50 and then you see what I mean. And I like to bring it to zero. So it will be a square publish. I go back and then over here, do I want to show this area where people can short based on popularity or latest? And if I don't want that, I can just turn it off before I had to, to use CSS code uh, codes, uh, work with PHP and stuff. Now it's just one simple click on a button shop results counts over here. No. If I remove them both, there's less space over here, which I really like. If I have a small shop, I don't use the sorting. If I have a bigger one, I use it. You know what? I will use it. Then I want to have a sidebar. It will be over here. We'll talk about it later. And then over here, I can bring it to the left or to the right. I prefer the right because that's what everybody has. And I want my web shop to be intuitive and pagination. If there are more products, I see pagination over here and I can configure it. Functionality options. What do I want to display over here? I can also only display categories. That brings me to the following. I can give all the categories a certain image. I'll do that. I can also show categories and products, but I prefer to only show products. 
And by default, what kind of ordering do I want to have? I use the default one and you can change it. So if you say sort by price ascending, the cheapest one will be here. And the most expensive one will be over here. I use the default sorting. I go back and I go back and that's it for the archive page. If I go to an individual product, this one, a single product, then I can go to the single product. If you don't see the image, you just need to hover over here and then you will see it. I can remove this upper area by turning this off or I turn it on and I configure it Then I can change it like this, uh, show it like this. Then I can add a title, excerpt, post, meta, and then bring it back to something like that. And then you see all that information, but I don't want to show that. I only want to show the breadcrumbs. So I turn this off and I want to bring it to the center. Container bottom spacing, how much space do I want to have over here? I think 32 is perfect, beyond perfect. Design, those colors, we'll talk about colors later. But you can also change the font. Or click over here and then you see all the options. So now it looks like that, but I will bring it back to the default one. We'll talk about it later. Let's click here one more time, make it a little bit more bold. Great. I can uh, display it in the wide way, what I did before, or with a right sidebar, or with a left sidebar. Well, I don't want that. For my product page, I just want a narrow width so we can really focus on the product instead of a sidebar. And then I can make it boxed, I can make it wide. I like the box version and then I can remove the space over here, but I like it. So if you want to, you can do something else. We can also play around with the gallery options. So I can make the gallery smaller or bigger. I like uh, 50. Thumbnail spacing. So the, the spacing between the thumbnails, 10 thumbnails, I can also make them vertical. So they will line over here and then again, you need to take a look, but I use the horizontal one. I prefer that one. Also here I can change this to uh, 16 by nine, etc. I use one by one and then the image size. Perfect. I want to have a light box. That means that if I click on the image, or if I click on this icon over here, I can see the image in its full width, full glory, and a zoom effect. If I hover over it, do I want to see this zoom effect? You can turn it off. You can turn it on. Those colors, you can change them. And as I said, when we talk about colors, I'll talk about it later. Okay, we're not there yet. I can decide what I want to display over here. So the product title, and then over here, I have extra options. Product price, add to cart. And if I click over here, I can go to design, change the colors. The sales batch, if I turn it off, it will be gone. I want to display the star rating and the product meta information. Over here, we have three tabs. I can turn them off. They're gone. But I like it the way it is. And I can also change the style to type 2. But I'm okay with this. Do I want to have a sticky gallery? Yes. Look at this. If I turn it on and I scroll down, it sticks with us. Or a sticky summary. So they can that can also stick with you. But since the uh, text is bigger, I, I stick them both. And right now, when I add something to the card, let me see if I can do that from the customizer. No, if I close the customizer, I go to this product and I add it to the cart. Over here, I will see a hoodie has been added to your cart and I can view the cart. What I also can do, I can go to the single product area where I was before. And then the add to cart, I can turn this on. If I publish it and I close it instead of appearing over here. Look at this. 
to appear over here. So whatever your preference is, you can do that. I like it, so I keep it. And then there's the other tab, the third one, general. And if I click on this product, or maybe better the, the hoodie, because the hoodie has a star rating. First, messages, uh, in what color should they arrive? Well, they're all fine. Star rating, what color should it be? I can change the color. Quant quantity input over here, I can turn it off. So people need to manually uh, fill in a number over here. And if you use the plus, you can also use type one and then change the design. I like type two or no, I prefer type one. Seals and stock badges. How do I want to showcase it? I can make it a circle. Right now it says seal. I can change the text. I can also use a percentage. So it will show how many percentage uh, the, the discount is. So if I publish it and I use this, I go to the shop and to the hoodie, it will say 20% of discount. So that can also be interesting for you. General sales and stock batch. I use the default one. Not, I'll use a custom one. And when it's out of stock, I can also display it over here. Then the account page. Let's go to the account page. I can use an avatar. I can use a username and log in, log out. But since people can also do that over here, I don't need to do that. Checkout page. For that, we need to go to the checkout page. Do I want to have a coupon coupon form so people can in, can fill in if they have a coupon code? But that's already the case um, at the cart page. There they can use their coupon code, so I don't use it on the checkout page. Let's go back to the checkout page. Highlight required fields, so it will look a little bit different. I don't need that. And over here, I want to have a clean checkout. This is a lot of information. So maybe you're only selling to, um, maybe you're not selling to companies, so you can get rid of this. Company name field, you can say, make it required or hidden. The second address line, I want to hide it. Zip code, town, phone. Maybe I don't need the phone. Right now it's required. I can also hide it. Then we need to select a privacy policy page and a terms and conditions page. So I publish this over here. Close this. New page. I create a page called privacy policy. Okay, add new. I also want to add the terms and conditions page. Publish, publish. We'll talk about it later. Terms and conditions, privacy policy, returning stuff, policy. So I go to the website, to the customizer. General checkout, then I go to the checkout page, and over here I select the privacy policy page, and here I select the terms and conditions page. You can change this text, and you will see it over here. Your personal data will be used. Um, I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions, and uh, you can change the text over here. Change this text and select the right pages. So store notice, if you're a fake store like this one, you can make a notice. People say this is a demo store for testing purposes. No order shall be fulfilled. So if you want to do that, you can turn that on. So that's it for the settings. And now our website looks great. And of course, we're going to take a look at the sidebar. But right now I'm really happy. 
since we have multiple images, I can talk about up cells and cross cells. So if I go to the hoodie, what I see is related products over here, but I can also play some custom up cells. So I edit the product. I scroll down to product data, linked products, and here I can place an upsell. So let's say if people buy a hoodie, they definitely should buy a t-shirt. Uh, let's say a, uh, a white L t-shirt. And if I update it, I take a look at the product. I will see that upsell. You may also like, and then this one. Or add a link products t-shirt L black or Elementor update refresh and now it says you may also like one of those three products so that's an upsell so depending on the product this time at hoodie I can create some upsells over here but I can also create a cross sell what is that if I say Elementor Let's not save it yet. If I add this to the cart and I view the cart, I see nothing over here. But if I have a cross sell with Elementor Pro and I update it, that means that when people have the hoodie in their cart here below, look at this, a cross sell will appear. So that's how it works. And when I get the hoodie out of my cart, it will also not be there anymore. So those are upsells and cross sells, and that's a nice way to increase your sales. Before we're gonna talk about the sidebar and widgets, I want to take a look at my menu because right now there are a lot of pages and I don't like the way it uh, looks so I go to the customizer and then I go to the menu over here and I can create one and I have no menu yet so I click on create new and I can, can call this one the main menu I choose header footer header menu one so everything I will add over here will be displayed over here so I can add an item for instance the shop and what else uh, let's do the checkout and the cart and my account. For now, that's fine. I can change the order. Publish. So it looks cleaner. And later, we're going to take a, a deeper look into menus. It is time to take a look at the sidebar and widgets. I don't have anything else to say about it. So let's continue with that. Okay, let's take a look at the sidebar over here and widgets. So in order to add widgets, I go to the customizer. I scroll down all the way and there I see widgets. I want to go to the WooCommerce sidebar. Then I need to, I got it. I can add a block over here. If I click on browse all, I have a better overview. Everything you see over here can be added to the sidebar of the website. Well, since we have WooCommerce, we also have WooCommerce related widgets. So we have a sidebar that is the whole area here at the side. And in those sidebar, we can have widgets. So I like filter products by price. So I click over here and then there appears a widget. So let me publish it and close it. What it does, it shows my cheapest product and my most expensive one. And then I can use filters to narrow the price range down. So if I have only $90 to spend, I click on filter and I see everything that is within that price range. If I bring this to 30, you'll see a few products will be gone and everything you see over here is between $10 and $30. So especially when you have a, a big website, it can be really handy to have price filters and other filters. Talking about filters, there are not that much filters in WooCommerce, but if you would go to YouTube and search for Kuroko Block Filter 30, 
I have this tutorial, create filters, that's me. Okay, I don't see the uh, example. So if you would go to ferdycorp.com forward slash CB for Croco block, and you go to solution e-commerce shop, and I click on view demo, the Zolden demo. I go to shop. I can have product category filters. I can have a search filter. Length, size. So if I would say S, I only see the products that contains a size S. I can say I only want to buy black clothes and everything that is black. So look at this, all those filters. So if you want to take that to the next level, this is a great way to do that. And I have tutorials about uh, a lot of these features. You can find them at ferdycorp.com and then tutorials, Croco blog. And then I have tens of hours of tutorials. For instance, this one only almost eight hours. So um, I need to work on it because uh, I don't have tutorials about everything yet, but I will work on it. So those are uh, filters. What else? If I go to the customizer, I scroll down, I can go to widgets, sidebar. And I can add a new one by clicking on the plus and I can search for cart. If I click on it, I can configure it a little bit further. I can hide it if it's empty. So right now there are no products in the cart, so it can be hidden. And I want to bring it on top like that. So if I publish it and I close it, I don't see it. But if I go to t-shirts and I choose M black, add it to the cart and I view the cart and I go back to the shop. Now I see this card. That is a nice feature. Filter by price and the card. What else? Customize. Scroll down. Widgets. WooCommerce sidebar. Click on the plus. I want to play some featured images. Fe featured product. I can select one. Go and call with 30. Done. And then it will be displayed like this. I can click over here, show more settings. I can show the description or not. I can change the opacity of the background. I can change the focal point. Change the colors of the text and of the background. And if I publish it, Close it. I knew it. I knew that the button will be in the center. So that's something you can do. And what you also can do, go to Google, search for best free WooCommerce widgets. Or even better, go to YouTube and search for those. And then actually, I should have a video. I don't. Best friend Daryl Wilson. He's not my best friend, but he's a friend. I've, I'm in touch with him. Nice guy. Oh, he has quite a few tutorials about it. That's great. So, uh, the 15 best plugins that will make you money. Don't we all want to make money? So, you can watch this one. Let's uh, screw this up to three views per hour. Screw. Is that the right word? No, I don't think so. Let's bring it up, turn it up. I don't know. So those are a few widgets and actually I don't like the way they are displayed over here. So I can change it by going to the customizer. Then I go to the sidebar and there are a few options. I think they're really big. So I want to make them a bit smaller using type two. Now they have a nice white background, but what I prefer is to split all the widgets in separate islands with nice white backgrounds. To show what I mean, uh, uh, let me go to the area separate widgets i turn it on and now there's a nice separation for all the widgets and i can also make the sidebar sticky that means that it can stick with us i will show you in a minute how that will look let me publish it close this 
get rid of this refreshed page. And now if I scroll down, it will stick with us. Okay, we're going to add one more widget. Widgets, sidebar, click on the plus, and then let me see, categories, product category list. Okay, then I can click over here, show more settings, and I can show the product count, make it a drop down like that. I can show the category images, but I don't have them yet. Show hierarchy or not. And I want to um, do not show the empty categories. So also a nice way to show some categories. Publish. Close. And I think it looks beautiful. Fantastic. So I scroll down and if I go to men, I see all the products that have the category men. So I can click here, add it to the cart, view the cart, change the amount, update the cart. We're going to talk in a minute about coupon codes. You can proceed to the checkout. Everything looks clean. This sticks with us. It looks great. What I want to do, I want to add an area over here. That will show how many products we have in our basket. And in order to do that, let's go to the customizer. Then I go to the header. Really simple. Over here, I see the cart. I drag it over here next to search. Click on it. It looks like this. I can configure it. So I can choose one which I like the most. Well, I like the type one. And then a design. We can change those colors. Background. Make it lighter. Okay, no. <laughs> Maybe it's okay as it was. More like this. And then I can change all the colors. What else we can do? We can change the size of the icon. I can batch. How many products there are in the basket? I can change this. And I can also turn this off. That means that if you hover over here, that this will be gone. Great. And then I want to get rid of the search area. Publish. Great. Let's go to the home page. Have you ever bought something online and then became a client in that store? You, you left your, your address and your email account, and then you got posts or messages from them saying, hey, there's a special discount. Well, I have that a lot of times. And then I think, hey, you know what? If I get discount, let me buy something in that store because I get discount. Well, that's a great way to make more sales by giving your customers coupon codes. So let me show you in the next part how to create a different kind of coupon codes so you can make more sales on your website for new visitors and for returning customers. In order to create coupon codes, we need to go to the back end. So I hold command or control on the PC and I click, drag this to the left. And then I go to marketing coupons. And I want to cre create my first coupon, coupon, cube, co coupon. So you can give this a name or you can generate a code. And when somebody fills in this code over here, at the cart, you can apply certain coupon discount settings. So the first one, let's say that the discount type is a fixed cart discount of $10. If I publish it and I grab this code and I paste it here and I apply it, look at this. We go from 159 to 149, but also when people buy something relative cheap, relatively cheap. So let's get rid of this one and go to the shop. And somebody buys this ebook. Add to the cart, view the cart. It only is $4.95. So $10 of discount 
for a $15 product, I think it's a little bit too much. So what I can say in the description is get $10 discount or off when you spend at least $35. How can I do that? Now I need to go to the usage restriction and I say the minimum amount that needs to be spent is $35. Update. So now when I try to apply the coupon code, it will say the minimum spent for this coupon is $35. So now people need to buy more. Now the coupon code can be applied as you see over here. So the minimum amount that needs to be spent is $35. I want to change the code to garter rope, garter rope, rope 10. And then I go back to general. So it's a fixed amount, fixed amount in dollars. The amount is $10. I can also say that when people apply this coupon code, they get free shipping, no matter how much the shipping would be. I turn it off and I can also say this is only available until the latest day of this month. So I can send an email to my email list. Hey, get 10% of discount for the rest of this month. And then we can go to the users restrictions. I can say a uh, maximum of $200 and after that the code would not be applied, but I see no reason why I should do that. I turn this on if I want this code to be a single code that cannot be used in conjunction with other codes. So if somebody has a code garter rope 10 and also a code 10% uh, of discount, if I check this, it makes sure that they cannot apply two codes at the same time. So they get double discount. So I turn this on and I can also say this code is not applicable to sale products. So if I update it, garter rope 10, remove this one and I paste the code, it will say this coupon is not valid, valid for sale items. Uh, even if you buy other items, as long as you have a sale item over here, it will not work. So I will turn that off and I can also say it's only for a certain product, only for the hoodie. Update. So if I remove this, I remove that. And I go to the shop and I go for the coaching call, even though it's more than $35. If I apply the code, it will say this coupon code is not applicable to select products. I can also exclude products. So I can say it's for all the products except for the coaching call or product categories, exclude categories or only for people that have a Gmail account. Well, if you want to take it that far, be my guest. Then I want to go to the usage limits. I can say that this coupon can only be applied or can only be used by 50 people and only be applied one time per person. So I can send an email to my email list from Carter Roby 24. Hey, the next 50 people get 10% of discount when people, when you spend at least $35. And when that would happen, that would mean, or let's say 100, 100. And all the people will use this. That would mean that you'll make $3,500 and they can have a lot of profit. So let's update it. So every person on my website can use it only once over here. And there are only 100 people that can make use of this coupon code. So that's our first coupon code. Let's create another one, second one with percentage. So I can say 10%, get 10% of discount on your complete order. Let's say let's get 10% of discount plus free shipping on your complete order. So this time percentage 10%. And it grants free shipping. It's uh, for an unlimited time available. Minimum spent? No. Maximum spent? No. It's not for all the products. It's available for unlimited usage. 
and one time per user. And I can also say it's for only the first three items in the basket. So let's see what happens if I publish this 10%, not a lot of the restrictions. So over here, I get it. But now when I create a, a, add a second product, and a third product and a fourth. Okay, look at this. What I see is that this is not 10% of this. Why? Because 10% is only applied to the first three products. So if I add more, the, the discount will be, remain the same. So let's try that. to the cart, a few more, view the cart. So it's not working on all products, probably on the three cheapest products. So what I can do over here, no usage, nothing, update, refresh. And now it's exactly 10% of the total amount I have to pay. Okay, remove it. Let's create two more um, coupon codes. Free shipping. Get free shipping. And then only check this. Uh, you can use it for a certain amount of people. I use it for everybody. And then I can go over here and I say free shipping. And when you add that, It's a free shipping coupon. So you don't have to pay for the shipping. And then the latest one, it can be for a certain product. So I can say um, coaching, coaching madness, coaching madness, get 50 off on your first coaching call with 30. It can be used only one time per user. And it's restricted to only the coaching call. That's it. Publish. So um, if I would remove this, I say, oh, wait a minute. View the card. Coaching madness. I think it should be 1D. It will say, sorry, this coupon is not applicable to select products. But when I add the coaching call, I view the card, I say coaching madness. I get no discount. I forgot to fill in the number. It's $50. Update, refresh. Now it's $50. And if I would remove the coaching call, my discount will also disappear. So that is how you can create coupons and coupons are a great way to get more sales. You can send coupons to people in your email list, to everybody that uh, bought something in the past. Uh, well, it's Black Friday and you have your email list, send it to all the people in the list. You can get a lot of sales in a short amount of time. I've done this and it's crazy how much money you can make in one day when you apply those principles. So everybody that buys this should actually you put on your email list and you can send it. And I have a different tutorial about that, growing your email list. So if you would go and search for convert kit tutorial, and I hope that mine will be first. No, six months ago, only 12,000 views and look how amazing it is. Two and a half hours, 4K captions. And then you can learn how to build a list and they say the money's in the list and it is really true. And if you can help people at the same time, it's a win-win situation. So that's it about coupon codes. When you sell physical products, you have to deal with shipping costs. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. So in order to add shipping methods, let's go to the back end of our website. We're going to add a plugin for that. Plugins at new. And I search for table rate. I'm searching for the one from WP Desk. 
that is this one more than 100,000 installations a lot of good reviews updated 17 hours ago so it's a great plugin and it's free I click on install now and it has a pro version so you'll see some advertisements for that but i will use a free version in this tutorial it's doing the job perfectly i activate it okay let me close this and then i want to go to woocommerce settings and then a general i want to sell to two specific countries one is united states of america and the other one is canada okay then i go to shipping and then over here i want to add a shipping zone the first one is united states and the region is also the united states you can also specify this to the states and then i want to add a shipping method and then i select flexible shipping add shipping method i click on it now i can configure this and i call this one ups because that's the carrier or how do you say that that's the company i use to ship my stuff you can configure this if you want to you can also give this a description but i don't do that because then you see it twice ups and ups do i want to let people pay taxes over the shipping i can say none and i want to give people free shipping when they spend more than 200 dollars and then the free shipping label is free you can change that then we scroll down I close this and then here i want to decide when people should pay a certain amount of shipping cost it can be based on the price it can also be based on the weight so you can select over here pay based on the weight and then at the singular products open this in a new tab let's go to the hoodie product data shipping i can give everything a certain weight and then based on the total amount of weight people can pay a certain amount of money for the shipping so i choose price and i can say when the price is minimum of zero dollars and the maximum of 19.99 then the costs are 6.95 dollars then i want to add a new rule for the price when it is from $20 to 49.99 then people pay 12.95 from 50 to 199.99 people need to pay $14.95 and then i said from $200 on over here the shipping will be free so i scroll down and i create one more rule J rule, not just kidding. Uh, from two hundred dollars until the max, it will cost nothing. Save the changes. So let's check it out. Right now, I've spent more than two hundred dollars. So if I view the card, and then it's free. Why? Because we pay more than two hundred dollars. If I close this, I do not buy that anymore. Then it's fourteen dollars ninety-five because we're between 50 and 199. So if I would be below 50, let's change this to one, it's 6.95. And when I would, would buy a lot of them, I'm over $200, let's buy one more, and one more. So now it's 14.95 because I'm still below 200 and if I update it, I can only buy 10. So I go to shop, t-shirts, different size, white, add it to the cart, view the cart. Now it will say it is free. Let's say I'm below $200. Then I need to pay those costs. But what I can do, let me go to the back end, to WooCommerce settings, then to shipping, United States, UPS. What I can say over here, display the notice with the amount of price left for free shipping. That's really nice. 
if I see that on websites, I sometimes buy something extra to get free shipping. So what it says now, you only need to have $120 more to get free shipping. So I buy one more and it will say, I only need $100 more to spend. So when people are, we only have to spend $20 more. You probably will buy something else in order to get free shipping. So that's a great way to make more sales. That's what we want, don't we? So that was the first one. I can create a second shipping zone for Canada. Do the same thing. Also UPS. Free shipping from $300. And over here, I can do the same thing. I can say from zero until 99.99. You pay 9.95. Add a rule from 100 to 199.99. You pay 19.95. And everything above is free. And then if you go to the checkout, you select your country, it's still free shipping. So if I would go to the uh, view the cart, bring it back. Okay. For Canada, I need to pay $9.95. So let's add one more. So now it's $19.95. Proceed to checkout. And if I'm from the United States, look at this. Right now we see 90.95. If I'm from the United States, the shipping is 14.95. So in that way, you can calculate the shippings based on the address where people are purchasing from. And you can all put this on autopilot. I really like it. And I actually hope you do too. Let's talk about my favorite subject. Let's talk about taxes. And I'm not meaning the state taxes. I'm talking about paying the government money you earned. It's, oh man, it makes me so happy. <laughs> we have to talk about it. It's not my favorite subject, not at all. But um, on the other hand, the more taxes you pay, the more you make. So I think it's a good thing to want to pay more taxes. Think about that. So let's talk about taxes. Okay, taxes. In order to do taxes manually, we can go to the back end. Then we go to WooCommerce settings and then I need to scroll down at the general tab until I see enable taxes. I turn it on and when I save the changes, I see a new tab tax. I click on it and as I said, we can do it two ways. We can do it manually and if you're from the United States, you can do it automatically. Well, here in the Netherlands, we have one taxes rate in the whole country, not in every state, a different one. That's 21%. And that's the standard rate, 21%. So if I have a company and my company sells a service for $100, I actually charge $121 and $21 is taxes. Woo! Don't we all love taxes? But there's also a reduced rate for books, for instance, I only have to pay 9% of taxes instead of 21. So I have standard rates and reduced rates. And I can see them over here. There's also a zero rate. I don't use a zero rate. That's, there's no such thing in the Netherlands and also maybe not in the United States. So I remove that over here at additional tax classes. Okay. And I like to save it. So we have two rates, the standard rate and the reduced rate. So if I take a look at my website, this is $299. When I buy this at the end of the day, when I want to pay, let me remove everything else. If I proceed to the checkout, it is $299 total. So no taxes, nothing. But if I go to standard rates, I can insert a row and I can say, for instance, that in the United States, US, I select it, there is a tax rate of 20%. The tax name is tax access or like that. Not for the shipping. That means, uh, do you also want to calculate 
taxes over shipping. I don't, so I uncheck this. If I would save those changes, and I refresh the page, that means that I will also pay around $60 of taxes. So the total amount will be this, and not $299. Why? Why? Because at the tax options, the left area over here, I said that all the prices I enter should be exclusive of tax. So if I create a product, $100, buy $100, and the price is $100. And I publish it, and I view the product. This is $100. I add it to the cart. I view the cart. But then if I remove this, what I see is that I pay $20 of taxes. So that's what I mean with this setting. No, I will enter prices exclusive of tax. So if you're only doing business to business, so everybody that buys something from you is a company, then I would place it like this. People pay $100 and then at the checkout, $20 of taxes will be calculated. I can also say that I want to include the taxes in the price. So if I say yes over here, and I sell something that's $100 and the taxes is 20%, it will state, it will still say it's $100. But then if you go and view the card, let me bring it back to one, it will not add it up. It will say out of this $100, 20% is taxes. So right now it's ex-VAT. If you turn this on, it will be inclusive of VAT. So if you sell to companies, I would say ex-VAT. If it's not to companies, I would turn this one on. Yes. Okay, calculate tax based on shipping address or billing address or the shop based address. So your shop, well, I like to say customer shipping address and for every situation it can be different. So definitely Google it. If you're selling from a certain country, check it how it is with the settings of your country in the Netherlands is based on the shipping address. So where the people buys from based on that address, the taxes will be calculated and then the shipping tax class, I leave it as it is I have the reduced rate. So if I would go, let me save it first. I go to reduce rate and then again, I can say United States and there it is 10%. Save it. Let me go back to Canada or the standard rates and then I can insert a row Canada and there I can say the taxes is 15%. or that over here, I can say Canada it is eight. Those are not the real numbers. So check that for yourself, depending on the country where you sell things to or sell things from. Don't calculate it over the shipping. So people that buy from Canada will pay 15% of taxes and people from the United States 20, unless they buy something that has a reduced rate. So for instance, there's a product, all products, and that is the ebook. Well, it's an ebook for some digital products. There's no taxes. So let's say this is not an ebook. It's a real book. Then I could say over here at general, the tax status is taxable, but the tax class is reduced. So I don't pay 20% in this case, but I pay, pay 10%. So if I view the product, I add it to the cart. I do not pay $3. Let me check this. I do not pay $3, which is 20%, but I pay 10%, which is $1.50. So that's the reduced rate. Well, if you're from the United States, you can go to taxjar.com forward slash states. And then you see the taxes. So in California, it's 7.25. So what I can do, I can go to the back end, to WooCommerce, settings, tax, standard rates. And then over here, I can say the state code, which is say, CA, CA, and then I can say 7.25, and then the next one, 
By the way, this is Canada, so uh, that's the wrong one. I should do it over here. CA 7.25. It's a lot of work. US, next one. Nevada, 6.85. NV, 6.85. Well, there is a better way. And in the Netherlands, if I sell to the Netherlands and Belgium, it's really simple. I have the Netherlands over here and Belgium over here, the tax rate over here of the Netherlands and the tax rate over here. The same with the reduced rates. But if you would fill this in all manually, it will be a lot if you live in the United States. So what I will do instead, I will go to plugins, add new. And then I say WooCommerce tax. It's from the same makers of WooCommerce. Some people like it, some don't. It's doing the job for me. So I click on install now, activate. I need to install Jetpack and connect. So that's what I will do. And if you don't have it, you need to create an account. And you can also automate shipping with it. I can continue with Google. I can continue with Apple. Let's continue with this email address. I click on login. Okay, I'm linked. It's authorizing my connection. Great. I will dismiss this now. Got it. Thanks. I like to keep things clean. As you know by now, I don't want all this stuff. Now I go to WooCommerce, Settings, Tax, and I see a new option, Automate Taxes, and I enable it. So that's better. And I click on Save. Now everything will be done. For me, which is way better in my opinion. Let me get rid of this one. It's a little bit weird to buy $100 for $100, especially when there's shipping costs involved. If I want to remove it, move to the trash. Then I go to the trash over here. And I empty the trash. I go back to my website. And that looks better. Another amazing subject. Let's talk about the privacy policy, disclaimers, terms of service. Uh, we're going to dive really deep into it. I will just show you the basics and then I will make another tutorial where I will dive deeper into the subject because it's a big subject. So let's talk about that in order to sell things on our website. In order to sell things on our website, we need to have privacy policy disclaimers and stuff. So uh, let's talk about that. Let's create a few pages by going to the customizer. Then I scroll down to menus. I create a new menu and I call this one legal. I don't want to place it anywhere in the website. So I click on next, add items. And then here I click on add new page and I type the first one, privacy policy. Add. Now that page is created. The second one, terms and conditions with a capital. If you don't use a capital here, man, you'll be sued like crazy. No, I don't know, but I think it's uh, better. Cookie, cookies or cookie policy. Then the return, return policy. If you um, make use of physical products, what's the policy on that when people don't like the stuff? A general disclaimer. Okay, then I click on publish. I go back, I go back, and then I want to go to WooCommerce general. And I want to go to the checkout page. Make sure that the privacy policy page is selected. The terms and conditions page is selected. Great. Publish. Close this. Now I want to go to the footer. I want to add those pages over there. So I go to the backend holding command or control on the PC. I go to first, I close this screen. Uncheck. Stats by Jetpack. Then I go to pages, all pages based on the date. So I see the most recent ones first over here. I want to add the disclaimer in the footer. So I click on view, copy the link, backslash, 
And then over here, I want to go to the customizer, to the footer, select the copyright area, remove copyright, current year. And after that, I want to have a pipe, Let's say disclaimer. Then terms and conditions, and the return return policy. So I go to disclaimer, command or control K, and I paste the link and I apply it. Then the next one, let me see terms and conditions. Hold command in a new tab, copy the link. Command K, control K, paste, enter. The return policy, view, copy, paste it. Okay. Then let me see the results. Okay. I want to bring this to the center. Publish, close it. Okay. Disclaimer, terms and conditions, return policy. Uh, if you want me to make a video about this subject, it's a little bit complicated, uh, but let me know. I will do my best to create one. Uh, what I also advise, hire someone that is uh, in, into legal stuff to make this for you and you will pay for it and then they will do a perfect job for you. You can do it yourself. Google it now. How to create privacy policy for a web shop. And there's a free policy generator, so you can use that one. So that's how you can go through it. Uh, let me know. I can make a video about it, but I don't want this video to be uh, six hours. I will leave it up to you to make this or create a separate tutorial for it. Hello, people. Are you still having fun? I hope so. Thank you for being here at this point in the tutorial. That means that you're taking it really serious. I hope uh, you'll sell a lot of things uh, as long as you sell things that are okay, not really bad things. And uh, we're going to talk about something really interesting. And this is what I love when this works. We're going to talk about payment providers. So when I made websites in 2005, I had to do so many things in order to make a website work with payment providers, linking things, encrypting things, making things so it was so hard. I, I even cried once <laughs> because it wasn't working. I was having a deadline. I was oh, but these days it's quite simple to put a payment provider on your website. What does it mean? People can pay with credit card, with, with a lot of different, with, with PayPal, with a lot of different payment providers or with a lot of different payment methods. And when they pay, you get an email like someone with somebody paid and then you can ship the products. And if you sell digital products, it will all be an automatic pilot. So let me show you how to implement payment providers into your website, or I mean payment methods. If you want to know how to sign up, for a payment provider, you can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash stripe. Okay. Uh, you can sign up. If you want to learn how I have a separate tutorial about it, search for stripe 30. There it is. It's two years old. So the layout looks a little bit different, but I, I talk about it, how you can sign up so I can sign in already. And I'll walk you through the steps, but signing up is something you need to do yourself. I need to confirm this with a number on my phone, a text message. And now I will be signing in. Okay. My biggest uh, sale, sale, sale day, sale, selling day was April the 19th, 2020. Great day. My latest payment was uh, last week because I sold my affiliate marketing course. But uh, what I want to do, I want to go to developers. I want to start with an API key. Then I want to use test data and then I want to use this publishable key. Click to copy. Then I go to summer clothing to the back end with summer clothing. I do my website. I mean my website with summer clothing. I mean my WooCommerce website. And then I go to plugins at new Stripe WooCommerce. 
And then I want to go for the one that is from WooCommerce. Install now. And then I activate it. Okay, then I go to WooCommerce settings. I go to payments. Look at this, all those options over here. Generated with Stripe. So let's go for credit card. Where is it? Stripe credit card. Turn it on. Now I need to connect my Stripe account. So I click over here. But I prefer to enter my account keys. So I click on advanced and there's the live publishable key. That is this one. I copy it and we're still in test data. So I need to go to the test area. I paste it. Then I copy the secret key. I paste it here. And then I need to create a webhook. How can I do that? Well, I need to add the following endpoint, this one, to my Stripe account settings. Let me show you how. I go to webhooks. I add an endpoint. I paste it. And I need to select an event, which is charge. I select them all. Add events. Add an endpoint. Okay, there it is. Then I have this key over here. I copy it and I paste the secret over here. And I click on save test keys. Okay, great. Now I can give this a name. I enabled Stripe. So I just say Stripe, uh, credit card without Stripe. Pay with your credit card via Stripe. Or just pay with your credit card. Maybe Stripe. Gives people some trust. And this is all test mode and it seems to be working. And on the bank statement, what should it say? Ferdinand and the media or something else. And I click on save the changes. Great. Now I go to the website. I go to the checkout. And I can pay with credit card. So let's fill in the details over here. I can also pay with Google Pay. Let's fill in my details. Okay. Okay, I can pay with credit card and I need to fill in those details over here. And then I agree and I click on place order. And if it works with the test version, it will would also work with the live version. Your order has been received. So it works. That is great. So now if I go over here, I go to the homepage. I see today I made money. It's, um, let's see, today. 1531, 1531. So it worked. And keep in mind, this is the test mode. So if I turn this off, I don't see it. So the test mode worked. We paid money. So now I can turn off the test mode, go to developers, API keys, copy the publish publishable key, go to the backend, WooCommerce, settings, payments, and then again with Stripe credit card, I manage it. I go to the settings. I turn off test mode and then I need to edit the account keys. Maybe I should first save it. And it says the live keys are no longer valid. I know because I need to edit them. So I do that over here. So the live publishable key is this one. I paste it. The secret key, I paste it here. And then again, I need to go to the webhooks, create a new one, grab this code or this uh, URL, paste it, select events, charge, select them all, add the event, add the endpoint, then I Grab this key, it's copied now. I paste it and I save 
the live keys. Now you can accept payments with bank content, credit card, debit card, EPS, Giro Pay, Ideal, and other things. I save it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we go to the website, we buy something. I add it to the cart. I view the cart. I proceed to the checkout. I can pay with Google Pay. I can fill in my details, although they are already there. And now there's no test information. This is real stuff. If I would pay with my credit card right now, it will be subtracted from my credit card account and it will be added to my Stripe account over here and it will be paid out a few days later. So that's how you can activate payment methods on your brand new WooCommerce website. So how about we test it? I go in an incognito window to the homepage. So this website is just a few days old. I accept this stuff. I click over here. I want to buy this ebook as a brand new customer. I add this to the cart. I view the cart. I proceed to the checkout. I will fill in my details. Birdie. I'm from Canada. Now you know what? United States. My street address. I've been to the United States twice. It was amazing. My email address will be 30 corp at gmail or corp first hook at gmail.com. Okay. And I want to pay with the real credit card and then I want to agree to everything. Place the order. Your order has been received. And now I can download the ebook. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And uh, uh, for me, this, this moment is crazy. Why? This over here is a digital product. I created this using InDesign. I get it some knowledge. It, this is definitely not worth $14.95. It's a free ebook. But if you create something with your information, you make sure you get a nice layout and you, you, you create something valuable that is digital, you can sell this an unlimited times and it's all on autopilot. So I download this because I bought it, but you can create something which is even better. You can create a WordPress theme. You can create uh, a song that people can buy as a license to use in their videos. You can create anything digital on the internet in the world and then sell it. And that is crazy. It's an amazing time we live in where we can do things like these make a living out of it. That's what I really love about the internet. So it works. I'm happy. I hope you are too. And if we would go to Stripe, Stripe, where did I really close my Stripe account? Yes, I closed everything. I remember I go to my dashboard and look at this. This is not a test mode, but I just made 14 euros and 11 cents because I bought something and I, ex I can expect it in 10 days. So imagine you would start making advertisements right now for your amazing ebook or the thing you promote and you pay $10 in advertisements and for every $10, one person buys it and you have no shipping costs and stuff. Then you can have $5 of profit for every $10 you invest and then you can play around with um, optimizing your return on investment. And that's why you see so many advertisements because people are trying this all the time. But as long as you focus on helping other people, I think you're worthy to do ads. And um, I also want to do this. I have a course. If I go to ferdicorp.com. I'm just not, not good in marketing. Let's be honest. I have the passive income with YouTube thing. I also made a tutorial on how to make this. People leave their name, email address, then they see video sales letter. Then I ask them to buy my course, which is $997. And what I want to do, I want to optimize it. Not like, not, not to the point that I'm um, pushing emotional buttons, but to the point that I really convince people that what I offer in my course, that it is amazing. And it is. And uh, as I said, somebody bought it a few weeks ago, $900 paid to my bank account May, four days ago. And then I get access to this and then I can learn how to make money online through affiliate marketing. 
But what I can do, I'm not doing that right now. I could make advertisements for this and then automate everything. And the great thing is when I find out how it works and I have a really great return on investment and I could potentially make millions of dollars with it, then I will also make a tutorial about it because I'm, I don't like it that people sell things for a lot of money and then they don't give really real value. So I want to put it on the internet for free, except for my affiliate marketing course that costs money. So I hope this was all clear for you. Let's go back to a garderobe 24 and see what else we can do. When people buy something on your website, they get a confirmation email. That email looks a little bit basic. You see at, at, at once, this is a WooCommerce website. So we're in the next part, we're going to make it look a little bit better. In order to change the layout and the content of emails that people get when they buy something on your website, I want to go to the back end. First, I want to change the payment method. So I go to WooCommerce, settings, payments. I want to turn off Stripe credit card and turn on cash on delivery. So I can buy a lot of things on the website, test a few things without having to pay every time. So I go to the website again, and now I want to buy something. I go to the checkout. My details are still there and I pay cash on delivery. So I place an order and then I need to check this first, of course, place the order. I will get two emails, one as a client and one as the administrator. So this for me as an administrator. So as a webshop owner, I get this email. You received the following order from Ferdy Korpersoek. And then this is the order, the way it is paid. Where should it go? And congratulations on the sale. If I want to change the look of few, I can do that. I can go to the website, to the back end. Then I go to WooCommerce, settings, emails over here, this tab. And then there are a lot of emails that can be sent when there are new orders, canceled orders, failed orders. And what you see over here, the first three are for me as an administrator. So I get an email called new order. And that is this email, new order, order 100. And below are the emails that customers can get. So as a customer, I filled in my email address, info at Ferdicorpsuk, which is the same as an administrator. So I got another email over here as the buyer. So this one is for me as the administrator. This one is for me as the buyer. And then it says, thank you for your order. Then we see the colors, we see this text. We can change all that and I will show you how. First, let's go to this one. Before we're gonna take a look at this one and uh, this one, I scroll down and there are a few basic settings. The from name right now, in both cases, it is from Summer Clothing Clothes for Women Garderobe 24. I can change that to Summer Clothing Garderobe 24 or like this, Garderobe 24, Summer Clothing. The from address, I want to change it to info at 30 Korpersoek or even better, info at garderobe24.com. If you want to learn how to create an email account, all that stuff, you can go to YouTube and search for SiteGround Tutorial 30. And there it is. There I show you 37 awesome features. So let's say 30corpersook.com. My header image, I can go to the media in the new tab. I have this one over here, but it's really big, 16, 17 in pixels. So what I can do, I can copy the URL, paste it, save it. Garderobe 24 logo, 300. Then I go to the media library, I close this, I drag it over here. So it's exact the same one as this one. So I click on it. I want to edit the image, bring it to 300 in width, 302 scale, close, click, copy URL to the clipboard. And then I pasted that. Did I go too fast? I'm sorry, if that's the case. Then you can watch it again. 
Then there's the footer text. So there's the footer text, summer clothing, clothes for women, garderobe, built with WooCommerce. I can change that. I can say, thank you for shopping with us or at us at garderobe 24. I will also get it as an administrator, but I don't care about that. It's okay. The base colors, we have not talked about colors yet. Colors are really important. If I go to cool blue, not know, it's a Dutch website, one of the most uh, popular. It's kind of Dutch Amazon. You see those colors, you see them come back everywhere. So if I click here, the title is blue. This title is blue, blue, everything is blue and orange in the same style. So what kind of color, what are the colors you want to have in your website? Really important. You can take a look at this colors for brands, images. I like this one. Then you see all those brands over here, all those logos, what colors they are and what they say. Friendly, excitement, creative, trust. Then you can choose colors. So what I can do, I can use the color pick eyedropper. I can grab this blue color, copy it. Then I go to the WooCommerce settings and I paste it over here. And now this is blue. Everything else, I'm okay with that. I save the changes. So we, we configured a few basic settings over here. So let's make, let's do a new order. I want to get the ebook again, add to the cart, view the cart, proceed to the checkout, check this, and I place the order. And again, I will get two emails. So let's see how they will look now. So there it is. And now it is with a logo. It is blue. Thank you for your order. So the style is changed and here. It says, thank you for shopping at Garderobe 24. Over here, this is what the buyer gets. Okay. So now it looks better in my opinion. Uh, right now I don't see the logo. I have weird colors. I see this text and it's from summer clothing. And now it's from Ferdy Korpershoek. Uh, that is because I already have my email address over here. But if I would not have this in my account, you would see This name over here. The logo, different color, and then a different text. And for the buyer, I see my logo. Thank you for your order. Nice colors. Thank you for your order. It's on hold until we we'll confirm payment has been received. Great. We look forward to, follow, to fulfilling your short order soon. And this is because I changed the payment method to cash on delivery. So let me go back. I don't want to make this too complicated. You have all those emails over here that with customer order is on hold, processing order, completed order. And when you have an order that should be paid at once, so people need to pay with credit card or with Stripe or whatever, PayPal, and it is paid and then they go to the thank you page, then they will get the processing order email. If you click over here, you can adjust even more things. So right now, since we are working with this email, your order is on hold. I will adjust that one order on hold, but keep in mind when people pay at once, you need to adjust this email. I will do this one. I want to enable this. If I don't enable this, uh, the, the confirmation email will not be sent. And then the subject, your order has been received. And that's what we see your website name order has been received. So what I prefer is thank you for your order at Carter row 24. Then the email heading, I like to paste it. Thank you for your order and then remove this additional content. We look forward to fulfilling your order soon. Look at this. We look forward to fulfilling your order soon. I can change it to Good luck with your or normal text, no capitals with your order. Kind 
regards 30. If I save the changes and I go to the checkout again, I have nothing there. So I return to the shop. I buy this over here, add it to the cart. And I go to the checkout and I place the order. Look at this. Right now, it says, thank you for your order. We look forward to fulfilling your order soon. And now it says, thank you for your order. So again, blah, 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 blah. And here it says, thank you for your order. Thank you for your order, logo, colors. Good luck with your order, kind regards, 30. So you can change that. You can take it a step further. This is for me. You can take it a step further by going to the WooCommerce settings. And then uh, let me go back to settings so you see where I am at. Emails. And then order on hold. Click on it. Now I can make a copy of my current template, which is at the WooCommerce area. If I copy this file to the theme, that means I can overwrite some things. For instance, let me see this text. So let me show you. I have a tutorial about it, but hey, I will include it in this one. So why not? Copy file to the theme. What I don't like is that the tutorial is getting longer and longer. I hope it will not withhold people from watching it. So I created uh, a copy, Bloxy WooCommerce emails customer on hold order. I saved the changes. Now let's go to the, let's go to the next level stuff. Appearance, themes, and then here we see the theme file editor. I click on it and get a big warning and I understand it. Like, hey, if you mess codes up, you can totally wreck your website. But I will show you exactly what to do. I scroll down and I search for WooCommerce. Over here, then emails, and then customer on hold order.php. I click on it and now I see all those codes. Please do not be careful. What I'm searching for is this copy, Command F or Control F, and there it is. Okay, it says, Thanks for your order, it's on hold. All this text. So I can change the text. So I can say, thank you for your order. I want to inform you that this website is not real and that I have your money. <laughs> I guess you did not see that one coming. In the meantime, there's a, here's a reminder of what you've ordered. So keep in mind, it will, but um, it will not. All right, because this webshop is fake. I tricked you. And if I update this and I go to the shop and I buy this book and I add it to the cart, and I go to the checkout, and I check the checkout and I place the order. Look at this. This was a text, text in the last email. And then over here, Thank you for your order. I want to inform you that this website is not real and that I have your money. So that's how you can change the, uh, adjust or no, add the logo, adjust the color, change this text, pay cash upon delivery, good luck with your order and the text over here. And then there are um, also ways to get even better WooCommerce email layouts. You can go to YouTube for that. I don't have a tutorial about it yet, but you can search for WooCommerce custom email layout tutorial. Wow, mine is first. So uh, here, email builder. So in that way, you can optimize it even further. And then uh, there are so much more we can do. But let's first go to the homepage. So now, we created better WooCommerce email confirmations. So what can you do when a new order comes in? Well, let's talk about order management in WooCommerce. 
first you get an email. So make sure that the email account that is linked to your website is active on your phone or on your computer. So you see it when a new order comes in. So it's um, 10.42 and a minute ago I received a new order and it's a hoodie, brown cap and a black t-shirt. Here's the address. So now I need to take action. And when we talk about order management, we can do two things because also the buyer gets an email. What I can send to the buyer is this. Let me show you. I can go to WooCommerce, settings, emails. This is the email I just received, but when somebody buys something and pays with credit card or PayPal or Klarna, they do not get this email, but they get the processing order email. So what I can do, I can click over here then I can copy the file to the theme, which we have done before. I save the changes. Then I can go to appearance theme file editor and click on WooCommerce emails, customer processing order. I scroll down and change this text to just let you know that you, that we received your order and it's now being processed. I can change it to we received your order and it will be shipped to you within 24 hours. If I save this, this is what people will get when they order something on my website. And for me, then it's done. I don't have to do anything in the management. I just need to make sure that I send the products to the right address. How can I do that? I can go to WooCommerce orders and I see there's a new order. And there it is. It's, the status is processing. So I click over here. And then I see all the details. I need to send this, this, and this. And if you hear something, it's my daughter. She's laying here on the ground. Coupon was used. Over here, I can refund it. So if somehow someone says, I don't like it, or I want to cancel it, I can click on refund and the money will be refunded. And when I made sure that I sent those products to this address, I can click over here at status. I change it to complete it. Click on update over here. And now a new email will be sent. So again, let's go to settings. Emails. Completed order. Click over here. And then this email will be sent. And again, I can copy this file to the theme. Save the changes. And then you can adjust that information. But I prefer the first way. So I change the information of the processed order. If you take a look at this website I made for a client, they're all being processed, but they're all already sent because when they order something, I send them an automatic email that's saying, hey, it will be shipped to you within 24 hours. And then I don't have to take a look at this. And I use my email account to see the address and then I send the package to the right address. So you don't have to use it, orders, but if you want to learn how to do that, I want to show you how you can do that. In the confirmation email section of this tutorial, I showed you a color I want to use in my website. So I go to the backend and to WooCommerce settings, emails, and then I have a color here below. I want to copy that Then I go to the website and we can take a look at the colors in our website, which is quite exciting. Let me show you. I go to the customizer. What I see, the website is kind of bluish. Everything is blue. When I hover over here, this becomes blue. This is blue. When I click over here, the button is blue. This is blue. When I hover over here, everything is I'm blue. I'm a demon. Mm. Okay. Let's keep that in. It will give us a lot of new subscribers. So here at the Bloxy theme, if I go to the colors, you see this color everywhere, but we can change this color. So if I click over here, look at this green, 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 everything becomes green. If I change it to this one, everything becomes this color. So that's a great way to change colors in your website, because if you need to change all those colors on every single spot in the website, it will take a lot of time when your client says, Hey, I want to have a different color or when you yourself think, Hey, I want to have a different color. So I can choose a different palette. Look at this. It will change. It will change everything. Wow. Of course, this needs some adjustments, but look at this. You can make a dark website. Wow. And if I would change this. Okay. Let's change it a little bit more, more to the greenish one. 
look at that. If I would change the logo to a light one in a short amount of time, we adjust a lot. So if, let me see how it looks on a single product. Wow. And that's the power of the Bloxy thing. Okay. I bring, bring back to palette one. Oh, my eyes. Ouch. What I can do now, I can click on color one and I can use a color. I just copy it. So that's a blue one. But the second one, I can make it orange and it will become orange in my complete website. So now when I hover over it, it becomes orange. When I hover over here, it becomes orange. So I can change the look a few with a few clicks over here in the color palette. I publish it. So uh, keep in mind that it is important to change certain colors in your website. And now everything is changed. That's what I really like. What we're going to do now, we're going to take a look at the menu, the header of our website. How can we make it look better? Well, let me show you right now. What else? The menu, I want to take a look at it. We have taken a look at it, but I want to take a little bit more a look at it. <laughs> Weird English. Let's go to the this area to menus and we have created our menu already. If you don't have one, you can create a new one by clicking here. I want to go for main menu. I select it. Now we see the shop, car, checkout and my account. If I would go to nike.com, which I am actually doing. What I see is new releases. New releases is a category. We talked about WooCommerce categories. New releases is a category. If I click on that, I see a lot of products that have the category new releases and then you see subcategories like these. So what I also see is men and subcategory shoes, lifestyle running, women, kids, sale. If the goal of your website is to sell things, um, we need to make sure that that is represented in the menu. So the shop, yes, I want to leave it. The cart, no. Check out, no. My account, no. So I want to add WooCommerce categories, but I don't see them over here. So I need to go to the screen options and turn on product categories. I turn them on and there they are. So I want to add them all, uh, not all, uh, men, coaching, ebooks, electronics, add them to the menu. And then I know that this is a subcategory of men. So I bring this to the right to men and we have coaching, ebooks, electronics, and here also. Okay. What I actually should do right now. I should go to products categories. I should say woman add a new category and then shoes and then the parent is woman. What else tops woman. I've done that now. I can go back to appearance menus, main menu. Okay. Now I can go to WooCommerce or product categories and I can add, let me go to view all women. So I can drag this one here below men or why not first women shop, women, men, clothing, coaching, ebooks, etc. So if I save the menu and I take a look, people that go to my website, see the shop page, then the women, shoes, tops, men, hoodies, t-shirts, coaching, ebooks, electronics. And when you would get, um, let's go to 30 corp.com forward slash block C. When you get, would get the pro version, uh, you can get even better menus. Let's search for the advanced menu. Oh, I cannot click on it. I only know it is there. Multiple headers. Double, okay. Where is it? It means that you can create something more like this, which is great if you have a big website with a lot of stuff. And I will make a tutorial about that. So right now it looks like this. Let me go to the customizer. 
Then I can go to the header, to the menu. And then I scroll down until I see the drop down options. So when I hover over it, then I see the drop down. And then I can change the style over here. So I can change the item spacing. So if I increase that, it looks like that. That's what I like. The effect, I can change it to something else. I can change the width. But I want to go to the design. The background color is this one. Uh, if I want to make it lighter, I can do that, but then I don't see the color. So I need to change the font color to blue. And when I hover over it, it becomes orange. Like that. But then I want to click over here and make everything capitals. Maybe big, thick, uh, bigger and thicker. Okay. So that's how you can adjust it. And then I want to go to general, scroll up a bit, go to design. I think it's really bold, maybe a little bit less, 500, and maybe a bit bigger. Okay, what I also can do, I can bring this to the center, but then it interferes with my logo. Then I go to my logo, I can make that logo smaller. Let's see how that will look. Close this. Perfect. Don't you like this? I really like it. What I see is that this is um, dark instead of blue. So I can go to the customizer. Oh man, I get so excited about this. Wow. The header, menu, and then the sub menu. Sorry, first design. The font color is this one. I think it's this one. I don't know. But let's make it that one. Then I go back to general, to the design of the drop down. Then I want to change the color also to that one. So now, yeah, that looks better. So style is really important. Uh, personally, I think, even though I made this logo myself, I think it looks great. It looks classy. And this text is a little bit smaller, so I can go to the customizer, go to the header, select the menu, go to design, to the text, and I change that this to regular. Publish. And then um, let's talk about the header. Um, let's go back all the way. If I go to the header, I can add things to logo menu. I can even bring the logo over here to in, at the center. And in that way, change the whole look of view, bring this menu to the left. There's so much you can do and it's all for, for free. I think that's crazy, but I like it. We're the big winners here because the free themes are getting better and better. They're competing with each other. If one person makes it free, one theme, then the other theme also has to go with that. And uh, we're the big winners. So right now we have the main row over here. I can add a search icon so people can search throughout the website. Also that is displayed really nice. So kudos to the Bloxy theme, even though I don't know exactly what kudos are, but I think it's something good if you say that. So I say it. Then we can add HTML over here at the left top. And then I can click on it. And I can say sign up for, wait, sign up for the newsletter and receive 20% off. And then when you do that, when people sign up, and this can be a link, sign up for the newsletter, hashtag, so there's a link, sign up for the newsletter and receive 20% off or discount. We can make it look better by going to the top row settings, then design background. Change it to this one and go to the HTML area. Design, text, white, the link color. It look like that. Okay, then I can go back 
and I can go for socials, bring them to the right top, click on it, go to design, make the text white and we hover over it, orange. If I don't like this, I can click here, go to design, make the text smaller, publish. I can go to the top row, change the row height. The sky is the limit. Then if I scroll down, uh, not much is happening. I can go back and then over here, headers. I can make it sticky. So this sticks with us. I can make them both sticky. So they both stick with us. Then I can even change the color. And if you want to learn more about all these settings of, of the Bloxy theme, I have a tutorial about it. YouTube. Otherwise, this tutorial will become so long. Bloxy tutorial 30. And there it is. One and a half hours. All about the Bloxy theme. In my opinion, the best free theme. I can use the main row. So it sticks with us. But I don't need it to be sticky. So, uh, okay. Then let's take a look how it looks on how it looks on a different device. That looks really weird. So what I will do here at the on uh, off canvas area, I click on mobile menu and I select our main menu. Okay, great. Then we can change a few things. This toggle, I can change it to something else. As you see, or the plus, well, I like the arrow down. Do I want to have a border around it? No. Items vertical spacing, do I want to have more space? It can be done. Then I can go to design. I think it's really bold. So let's make it regular or over here. It's smaller. Those colors are fine with me. No drop down. Uh, I need to go to the website to check that. Let me close it. Make this a bit smaller. Looks great. Customize. Then I go to the header and I take a look at the mobile menu. And that also looks great. And also in the tutorial, I'll go dive deeper into that subject. But I think we created something beautiful. So let me go back, publish it, and let me do a sum, summing, summing up. Is that the right word? This is the website we created so far from scratch, sign up for the newsletter. I have a tutorial on how to uh, make this link with ConvertKit and so you can grow your email list, make extra money because the money is in the list. And always, I want to say that always emphasize it uh, as long as you help other people. That is what you want to do. You want to focus on helping others then some way the money will flow into your pocket. Don't ask me how it works. So nice banner. It's not sticky because we decided so a nice logo menu in the center, we can search and we can see how much is in our basket. We have all the different products we have created. We talked a lot about it. You can add it to the cart. You can change the style, change the colors. You can view the cart. We talked about coupon codes, different kind of coupon codes with percentage, with um, money, depending on how much money you have spent, uh, a coupon code for a specific product. A coupon code with free shipping. We talked about ship shipping based on where people live when they buy this on your website. It will be calculated automatically. We set everything up automatically. Then we talked about cross sales and upsells. We proceed to the checkout. We can fill in our details, uh, remove fields over here, make them mandatory or not. We can ship it to a different address. And we talked about payment methods like Stripe, credit card, PayPal. Then when people pay, they get a beautiful email, really nicely uh, designed. And then we can 
make sure the order will be fulfilled. And then we make money while sending the product to the customer. And the great thing is if you sell digital products, everything will be on autopilot. So that's what we've created, a beautiful header. Footer, we talked a little bit about disclaimers, terms and conditions and return policy. And everything looks really nice in my opinion. When you build a website, it is amazing when SiteGround or a different web hosting provider makes backups for you. But I want to show you how you can do it manually using two different plugins. So when you start to make big improvements on your website, you can always fall back on a backup. You can fall back on a backup that has been done before. So in order to do that, we go to the back end to plugins at new. This is my favorite plugin, really simple, all in one WP migration. The only thing I don't like is the name. The rest of it is perfect. More than film for my installations. I click on install now and activate it. There it is all in one WP migration. And what I want to do, I want to hover over export. Export to file and that's it. Website is 100 megabytes. I click on download and we have a backup. Well, I like to be extra sure. I don't have problems with uh, uh, OE1 WP migration, but just to make things sure, go to plugins, add new. Oh, for instance, over here, it may be dangerous. I need to say, keep it. It's not. So SiteGround is all about safety. So I go to plugins, add new and search for WP Vivid. There is more than 100,000 installations install now. Activate. And then click here on this big button backup now. Great. Now I need to scroll down. I need to go to backups. There it is. I download it. And then I download it and there it goes. So if I go to the website first, let me go to the back end. Also here it is okay. Okay. Imagine I go to plugins add new and then I search over here for 30 corp.com forward slash Elementor. I will install Elementor, Elementor and I need to go for the plugin and I want to use a free version and they hide it somewhere. So I decided to go to plugins, add new, search for Elementor, install now, activate. Okay. I want to skip everything over here. Okay. Now I can make a website. Okay. So I click here. You don't have to uh, follow this really quick. Okay. And then the title. Blah, blah, blah. I bring it to the center. I go to the section. Uh, you don't have to follow me with this. Uh, hide fit screen. I publish it. Then I go back to the home page. Then I click here. I go to the website. I go to the customizer. I scroll down to the home page settings. And I change the home page to Elementor 1 to 3, the page we just created. Like that. And somehow I think I totally messed up. What I can do now, I can go back in this case to WP Vivid backup and restore. I can go over here and I say restore my backup I made five minutes ago. Are you sure? Yes. Click on restore. Okay. Restore completed successfully. So now if I go to the homepage, I should see the shop and not the weird Elementor page. And that's the case. I see the shop. So my backup is placed back. So that's a great way to put things back if you mess things up. Okay. 
a big change is coming. As I said before, maybe you already have a website and you're extending it with a web shop, or maybe you start from scratch and you don't have a website around your website yet. If you already have a website, well, then this is actually kind of the end of the tutorial. Um, if you don't have a website yet, let me show you how to import a starter template, which makes your website professional at once. And then I will show you how to adjust the information. So your website is amazing. I have also different tutorials on how to make websites. So if you want to build something custom, I will also show you how to do that in other tutorials and I will link them in the description. And then I would like to say, let's get started with importing a starter template. Are you ready to import a complete web shop? Different look and feel, new products, but the same principles that we, uh, that I showed you until this point in WooCommerce. If you are, say, yes, I am. I can hear you. Okay. It's also a weird joke. You know, the longer the video is, the weirder the jokes become. What I want you to do, I want you to scroll down, copy this area, Command C or Control C. I go to my notes. I place it over here. And now I want to go to the back end and make sure you have a backup with uh, all in one WP migration and WP Vivid. Then I can go to plugins. I can select this one and this one. Deactivate them, apply. So I keep this a little bit clean. Okay, then we need to do one more thing. We need to go to pages and then remove the cart page, the checkout page, the my account page, and let's see the shop page. Really important. Maybe it feels a little bit like, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Otherwise, uh, four of those pages will be added again and then things can be become a mess. Build actions, remove to the trash, trash, empty the trash. Great. Now we go to Bloxy, starter sites, and I can import this one, but it's only for Gutenberg. I can import this one. That's also for Elementor. And I want to import this one, garderobe. Click on import. I want to install a child theme. And I check Elementor. Next, I already have WooCommerce. Next, clean install. The starter site is imported successfully. So I view the site. And now it looks like this. Of course, we need to configure a few things, but I'm really happy with the look and feel. And um, there are new products, as you see, if I click on it, you see there's a right sidebar now. And, and depending on the theme you import or the, the starter template, the look and feel will be different. We have a different color right now. I'm really happy. This looks amazing, but we need to configure it. Of course, we need to change information. For instance, this area. So let me do that by going to the customizer and I go to my notes. I copy this. I go to the footer, the copyright area. Then I hit enter and I paste it. And then I grab the current year. Got it. And I paste it here Then I remove this, I publish it. I scroll down. And this is exactly what I want to see. And when it will be the Jan January the 1st, 1st, it will automatically say 2023 because we said we need to show the current year. Okay. If I click on shop, what happens? Yes. I go to the shop. I don't see the pages. Why not? I don't know. Uh, let's keep it with this. Figure it out. Good luck. Okay. So I go to the back end, close this, close this and remove them. And I go to WooCommerce to settings. And then here at products, the shop page, it's called products. Well, I want it to be shop. Okay. Save the changes. And now when I click on shop, I see all the products 
This time the sidebar is at the left. If I want to change that, go to the customizer. And then you can go to WooCommerce, um, Product, Archive, Sidebar, click over here, bring it to the right. That's how you can change it. Publish. Then I want to go back, go back over here to menus. And I click here, it's the main menu. Okay, I want to change that. So I close this, go to the menus. And yeah, they are merged. So I have one big menu over here. So I do want to show the, uh, the, the shop page, not the home page. Then there's women, there's men, and I remove the product page. Services about us. Services. News. Contact. And then this can all be as sub items. Okay, I can change this news. Can I, I can change it to block because I prefer that. So it will be a news page when I uh, enter the page, but in the menu it will say block. Okay, I don't see uh, the logo, so I go to the customizer. Nothing, so I go to the header. Logo, I select the logo, logo I created myself. Let me see, this is a small logo, I will choose this one. I can change this. I think 20 is fine. Uh, right now there seems to be an overlap, but if I close the page, or close the, the customizer. Yes. Okay, and then the home page right now shows this page, and that's exactly what I want. And then I can see the new arrivals. I can change the, the titles over here. So let me show you how I do that. Yes, I want to change this page. Edit with Elementor. Uh, your site doesn't have a default kit. So this is exactly what I want. Why? Sometimes when you make websites, you have problems. So what I will do, I will go to Google and find out how I can find a solution. Okay. I click on recreate kit. I check them all three. I save the changes. Go to the website. Edit with Elementor. Now it's working. So yeah, that's how it works. Just figure it out. Go to YouTube, try a few things, search for the solution and then continue and be happy because you learned something new. So I can change this text, brand new collection, brand new summer collection because uh, this is, although this is uh, looks really as something that's for the winter, I can change this text. I can change this icon and change the color and talking about colors. I can say command E dashboard. Then I can go to the website, customize. I can go to the colors. Those are different colors. I go to palette one. Again, I choose the orange color as the second one as I had before. Publish it, close it, and I go to the back end to WooCommerce settings, emails. Okay, this color I wanted. So, sorry, I copied this one. Then I go back to the website to the customizer to colors, and then I change this one. With a hashtag. 
publish, close. So now this is blue. When I hover over it, nothing happens. When I hover over here, things do happen. Now this is blue. The seal is blue instead of red. So as I said before, with a few clicks, we changed the look and feel of our website. I added the page with Elementor again. And now over here, I can say when people hover over it at style, hover, background color, background type classic, color, and choose this theme palette color like that. Over here, new arrivals. I can change the text. I can change the font. If I want to change the font in the whole website, I go to Elementor site settings, global fonts, change this one to open sans. Okay. Then I go back to typography. I can make, um, all the headers real way, for instance. Then I need to go by them one by one. And you see they change. H3. Normally I only use H1 and H2. real way okay update then i say close command e dashboard again then i go to the um, appearance customizer shortcut if you're in the back end you want to go to the customizer and then let's go to typography the system default Let's say open sans and heading real way h2 and probably this one will change when i say uh, real way or no it's already the new font so now you see all the fonts are changed and i also should do that over here Publish, then I can go back to WooCommerce collections. Uh, no, 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 not WooCommerce collections, but WooCommerce product archives. And then I can change the card options. Let me see, let me see. Here I can choose type two. I can change the look and feel. Okay, I see it here, here probably. Card options. I want to bring this back to predefined one by one. With size 600 is okay. I don't see the text over here, so we can take a look at that. We're still at the... So I need to go to card options design. Title color, and sometimes you just need to bring it again over there. Also here, price color. There it is. Button text color. Publish. Close it. Okay, again, let's go to Elementor. Let me walk you through this homepage. Brand new summer collection. I can change the text over here. I can say, uh, click on it and then make it a 60 day return. Free delivery for all orders over $200. New arrivals. I can change this 
to jackets or to someone uh, something else. Popular products, it will be sh displayed over here. If I don't want to have popular products, I can just remove it. If I don't want to remove it, bring it back, Command Z or Control Z. If I don't want to have a newsletter update, I can remove it. Or you say subscribe to receive emails and get 20% off on your first order. Update. Okay, and if we want to adjust that, command E, dashboard. I go to appearance, customize, and I go to the footer, scroll down. I can change the information over here if I want to. Change the text over here. I can click on widget area one. And then here I can change the text. And it will appear over here. I can change the colors, edit, design, background. I can make it dark. And then the font color, I can make it white. And also the title color, make it white. I go to this area. I don't want it. So I can close this area. Okay, then I go to the copyright area, make the background even darker and the text, I need to go to the copyright area, design, text should be white, logos can be blue and when you hover over it, it will be orange. Okay, then I can say, I want it to be less high, vertical space, 40, or 30, okay, I want this to be light. So, uh, but that's what you can do. I go to the background. Um, I can also bring it back here in this area. And then over here, edit. Let's like make it le less dark. Something like that. Okay. And um, here you can see how it looks on a different device. And if you don't want to show this, you can um, go over here to the header and then uh, decide not to show the HTML stuff. And then mobile menu. Let's take a look again. We can go to design, change this back to 500, like that. Better. And then uh, a design drop down font, I can make it a bit smaller. That's a bit too small. Okay. And then I can have dividers. But, um, no, thank you. Publish course on the mobile okay this can be a bit bigger or maybe this smaller or maybe both okay that's okay publish close it and ladies and gentlemen this is the website we have If you want to learn more about Elementor, making pages with Elementor, I have a brand new tutorial. Right now it's my most recent one. Search for how to make a website. And then, of sorry, of sorry, of course, I mean, enter 30 after that. And the weird thing is, yeah, it is this one. It's one month old, um, nine views per hour. It could have more, it should have more, in my opinion. It's in my opinion, the best tutorial about uh, how to make a website and, and then you'll see how to start working with Elementor.
I learned so much about it on how to create pages with Elementor. And then you can create the about page, service page, shop page, etc. Okay, I go to the back end to WooCommerce settings, payments, and I turn off cash on delivery, delivery and I turn on Stripe. Save the changes. And now I'm, I have a beautiful website over here. I can adjust the content. I can click over here, buy a few, add them to the cart. Also go for a black t-shirt. Let's do two. Add them to the cart. View the cart. We can add coupon codes. We can proceed to the checkout. Fill in our details and then pay with credit card or with PayPal, whatever you want. You can adjust that at Stripe or pay with a Google Pay. And then they will get a beautiful email. You can send the products. You will receive their money right into your Stripe account. And that will be sent to your bank account. Hello, people. Thank you for watching this tutorial. This is it. I hope you learn a ton of stuff. Your website is up and running. Everything is working. Everything is on automatic pilot. The only thing you need to do is make sure that when people buy something, you ship it to the right place. And um, yeah, let me know what you think of this tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment, like this video, subscribe for more upcoming videos. And I've also different tutorials. So uh, what you can do now, you can optimize your website for all the, the, the search engines. I have a tutorial about that. I have tutorials on how to build an email list and that's a great way to combine uh, with, with your web shop. So when people sign up for the newsletter or for a discount, they come to your email list and then you can send them emails with uh, new discounts and stuff or new products. And then you can sell a lot in a short amount of time because you sent an email out to a lot of people in a short amount of time. A great way to make money in a short amount of time. Have I told you already that you can do that in a short amount of time? I guess so. And otherwise I can tell you one more time. No. And um, I will talk about AdWords, how to make um, advertisements. Um, so people go to your website and then the, the whole part, the, the thing is you can learn how to put $10 in advertisements and make $20 in profit. Especially interesting when you, you uh, work with uh, digital products because then there is not much cost in making those products. So the profit is higher. That's for that tutorial. I have to make it yet. And what else? SEO. Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, if you want to start with affiliate marketing, I have a tutorial about that. Six hours long on how to make money online through digital products, promoting others people, other people's products. And um, that's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Have a great day. Good luck with your web shop and bye-bye.